wisely checking in my mind. He's going to win the pot, but you've got a chance to get yourself check raised out of the pot if you bet on the river there. Can't get paid off with much, so Ray taking down that pot. The lone non-professional at the table. Vince, the guy is doing very well in this event. Loves it. Love it. Well, I'll tell you something. We've seen so many talented players in the field here at Pagata, including one player who has earned his seat in this event by being named the WPT Deep Stacks Player of the Year, Ryan Smith. Ryan, congratulations to you. That's quite an honor. Thank you, baby. This week, we're in Atlantic City at the Borgata to present our WPT Deep Stacks Season 1 Player of the Year to Canada's very own Ryan Smith. Oh, it feels great to, to win something. He's a beast at the poker table, I'll tell you that right now. I watched him play. He's an absolute animal. Poker, I love the competition. I love making mistakes. That's what drives me every day to, to keep going and get better. WPT Deep Stacks completes the WPT story. We offer a chance for everybody to play it for reasonable buy-ins, playing at a competitive level. And you can be assured that if you go to the event, you're going to have a high quality experience. The whole poker economy and ecology is all built on the regular players that frequent casinos and card rooms. These are the men and women that really support and move our industry forward. The Deep Sacks, they're, they're great events. They've pretty much nailed it. So that's why I try to make every event. We are happy to be partnered with WPT Deep Stacks. And if you want to find out about playing in an upcoming tournament, log on to WPT.com for a complete schedule. And now we go back to the action here at Brigada. Blinds are still 25 and 55 players competing in the first place prize of nearly a million dollars tonight. Action going to Alexander Lakov. And he looks down at a pair of aces. Now he is loving this. The Russian makes it 110 to go. Carlos with a pair of fives right behind him. Calls. And now Brian Yoon with Queen Ted of Hearts. He's going to call as well. Yeah, so three players in the pot so far. Back to the blinds. Crazy Ray goes out. Sorry, my fault. Asher out as well. So some interesting hands here. Aces, fives, queen, ten of hearts. Let's see what happens. A flop, ace, eight, deuce with two clubs. Three of a kind there for Alexander. He could hardly look. Well, action's on him. Do you bet three aces or not here, Vince? Well, there's your answer. He does bet him, 225,000. And they both go away. Couple clubs out there, so the Russian didn't want to get greedy. Took the pot down right there. Yeah, there you see his friend and WPT champion, Renat Bogdanov, rooting his buddy on. We've always been looking to evolve and change, and we're really excited about Borgata Festival Park. It's an outdoor concert venue, about 40,000 square feet, having some of the biggest names in entertainment. People are going to come out in their, in their shorts and flip-flops and grab a beer and enjoy music and have a really good time. Well, I can tell you who's having a really good time here tonight. It's these five guys left fighting it out for the title at nearly a million dollars in cash. Asher Kniff well out in front with $5.7 right now. The blinds are 2550. Let's go to the felt. Action on the Matador. Carlos Mortensen looks down at an ace nine. That's the kind of hand that a lot of guys like to raise on. Under the gun, you're not crazy about it. You're just hoping to win the pot right here. Let's see what happens. Makes it 110 to go. Brian Yoon, though, behind him with a pair of nines. Brian Yoon looking him up and down. When you look at one of the all-time greats, Vince, what are you looking for? Maybe hundreds falling out of his wallet. I don't know. All in. Well, he's going all in, so whatever he was looking at, he said, I'm getting my chips in there. Ray gets out of the way. Chip leader Ash are not going to compete. And now Alexander out. So back on Mortensen. All right, buddy. And he can't stand that pressure. Looks like you're going to call, like. So Let me sure. make sure I have kings. Sure I have yeah. Ryan Yoon going to take that pot. So Carlos had it going for a while at this table. Thanks. Got lucky to double up against Tony Donson. Went up a little farther after that. But Vince, he's sort of in a downward spiral right now. Doesn't seem like he can get out of it at the moment. He's back in last place now with five players left. Sitting in fifth chip position, but don't count him out. Okay, action on Yoon. He's got a nice little suited connector, eight, seven of clubs. 
Yeah, it's one of those hands you love to see flops with. He's going to raise it. Makes it 110,000 to go. Ray out, Asher out. And now Alexander, who has, oh wow, he has got a big one, pair of kings. And in addition to that great hand, he will also pick up $1,000 in his DraftKings account. And he makes it 265 to go. Carlos deflated, goes out, back on Brian Yoon. And it costs Brian another 155000 to make the call. I know you want to see a flop with this hand, but you just haven't seen this Alexander guy making any moves without a hand. Do you really want to play 8-7? And there's your answer. You want to see a flop with it. Brian makes the call. Going into investment territory. Let's see if he gets lucky with this flop. Here it is. Ace, four, deuce, and Vince, how many times does that happen when you pick up two kings? Alexander disgusted. He's going to check. They both check. Three on the turn. Well, Alexander just not going to believe the guy's got an ace in his hand. Alexander's going to bet 305. Brian hits nothing, has to fold the hand. Nice hand. To us. It was. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good answer. Good so the Russian, who started out as the chip leader, he has been stumbling around a bit, takes down this one. Now Asher in command here, well out in front with 5.7 million in chips. Winner's going to take home close to a million here tonight in beautiful Atlantic City at the gorgeous Bogota Hotel and Casino. Quick fall by Ray. Asher is going to raise to 105 with a 6-7. No respect, my button. <sighs> and Alexander will squeeze out a King Jack. Well, what do you do now? You're in position. You're on the button. And you make the call with the King Jack. Carlos folds his hand. Brian with another little suited connector. I'd be shocked if he folds his hand. Just going to cost him another half bet or so, but you're getting a good price on your money to make this call, and he does so. Three-way action. Here we go with a Jack-10-3. All clubs giving Brian Yoon a flush. And he's going to check it. Well, he's going to check with the intent to check raise, Vince, if anybody bets. Alexander's hit top pair, Jacks. Asher got a four flush. And he's going to check. Yeah, he's going to bet 200,000. Anybody would bet top pair in that spot? All in. Wow. Now Asher goes out. Now Alexander's got a problem. He doesn't have a club in his hand. He just has top pair. Virtually, he's going to have to hit two runners in a row to win this pot. Not completely dead, but just about. He makes the call, but he has put Brian on a drawing hand. That is big trouble for the Russian, Vince. Good spot. I can't decide if you're going to get sweat or not on the turn. I, I don't know. I don't think Do you so. want me to? I, I know you want to. Yeah, but I don't want you to get scum, just sweat. Ah, uh, like, I, I see, lose. I see. I, just want, I appreciate I that, Asher. Yeah. You're, you're a true bro, man. <laughs> Vince, we've seen Alexander make some big laydowns at this final table. There's one that he should have made that he didn't make. Let's go to the turn, Mike. It's, it's over, four diamonds. So the UCLA grad, Brian Yoon, beating up the Russian on that hand. Nice one. Five players remain here on the World Poker Tour at Brigada, and we're coming right back. What if there was a place where over $1 million in cash prizes and WPT entries were given away every year? Well, there is, and it's only a click away. Join clubwpt.com today and win a share of over $1 million every year. Well, the beautiful Royal Flush Girls having a monster of a time here at Borgata this week. Oh, they were having a great time. There's never any rest for the Royal Flush Girls. <laughs> great attitude. But right now we have five players battling for this championship, Mike. Asher Kniff well out in front with 5.6 million. 
Wasn't even planning on playing in a satellite to get in this tournament, but he found out he was. He said, well, I'll just play it. Won the seat. Here he is, chip leader with five left. Asher quickly folds. Alexander going out as well. Carlos Mortensen not going to play. So into Brian Yoon, who has a king, 10 of clubs. Got to like it. He just limps in and makes the call here. There he is. Ray Cartumi, the non-pro at the table, is going to raise with a 7-3 offsuit. That's why they call him Crazy Ray. You just think, if this guy limped in, he must not have much. Let me try to just take this pot away with my junk hand right now, but didn't work. Brian called him. And the flop is a 10-9-6, tens for Yoon. Brian's got top pair now, and he checks him, and Ray's got the gut shot straight throw. And he's going to bet 100,000. Brian not going anywhere. Going to smoothly call it. And we are going to the turn. It's a five of clubs. I give a four flush to Brian as well. He's got top pair in the flush draw and checks again. And oh man. Ray just spewing his chips right now. Don't do it, crazy Ray. Don't do it. Yeah, he's done it. 250,000 to bet now. And nobody's going out with top pair in the flush draw here, including Brian. He makes the call. Down to the river we go. It's a club. Brian Yoon hitting a flush and threes for Ray. He's got the flush fence. I just check it again. Hope the guy bet and then move in on him. Brian's doing just that. He quietly checks. Will Ray fire another shell? No. Flush. He waves the white flag and wisely so. His opponent shows him the flush to take down the pot. So Ray Cartumi tried to bluff at that pot. We did. Thanks. Didn't work. That's that, Mr. Yoon. Thanks. Ever since I said the word momentum to you, you've just been crushing. Yeah. It's all because of you, Asher. I appreciate it, man. It's all because of you. Just but... passing the heat around. Yeah. <laughs> and the Andes are going up to 10,000. Blinds are now 30 and 60. Action back on Brian. He looks down at a queen four, opts to give it up. And now Ray, who just took a little beating with ace three diamonds, will raise it. Asher from Brooklyn, 8-7 to space, got a re-raise. Well, that's what you can do when you're chip leader. You make these kind of moves with eight high. Alexander and Carlos get out. So back on Ray with ace three of diamonds. Makes the call. Ace three versus eight seven. And flop is eight five three. Raise flop bottom pair and checks. Asher now has the best hand. He has top pair. And he is going to bet 220,000. And Ray's going to make the call with bottom pair. The wheels are starting to fall off crazy Ray. Queen of clubs on the turn. Well, neither player happy to see that because neither have a club in their hand. Ray checks. Asher checks right behind him. River card. Now seven of clubs. So four clubs out there. Asher now has two pair. Ray checks. I have no club. Asher Kniff is doing it tonight, Vince. The biggest cash in his career is 203000 He's going to top that tonight wherever he finishes. He said, I never dreamed I could be playing for close to a million dollars where I had a shot to win it. Well, he does now. He's our biggest fan, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> Pure monster sound. You have to hear it to believe it. Get yours today at monsterproducts.com slash WPT. Enter code WPT25 to get your special discount. We are at the WPT World Championship at Borgata in Atlantic City. Now, one man who has first-hand knowledge about this final table is our very own Tony Dunst. And he's with us now to give the lowdown on tonight's high rollers in the Raw Deal. I was hoping that making this final table in successive years would be the lead story tonight. But Asher can have stole my thunder by going on an incredible heater here at Borgata. Don't wake me up. As you've already heard, Asher was never meant to be in this event, which is what I kept telling myself after he caught me bluffing on day three. Should be a fun day. But what are the makings of a heater? And why is Asher the guy having one? Let's break it down. Everything happening for him right now, Kniff on a roll. I just had a chance to see some of Asher's hole cards, and I don't think there's one revelatory hand that shows how great he's played or lucky he's been. 
Instead, there's a little of everything in here. He uses pot control, where continuation bets are unlikely to work. When he flops no equity with jack-9 suited, Asher also doesn't try to win every pot in situations where he has weak equity. Notice that he doesn't keep firing against Brian Yoon when he's left with air on the turn. Asher selects good situations to attack the shorter stacks. First, by four betting ace-7 suited against Carlos Mortensen and firing the flop. Then by three betting Ray with eight seven suited and getting some value post flop. And even when Asher is getting lucky, he's making reasonable choices. We see him call a raise with pocket eights. Then turn a set to draw out on the pocket jacks of Alexander Lakoff. Asher leads out on the turn because he knows it's a card that Alexander will often check back and he wants the opportunity to get three streets of value on the runouts that are favorable to him. That's exactly what happens, and Asher gets paid off. He takes the Kanish and shoves it down the Russian's throat. The only potential downside to a heater is becoming deluded into believing you're that much better than everyone else. But Asher is a hardworking grinder who's perfectly self-aware about his recent good fortune. He said, I never dreamed I could be playing for close to a million dollars where I had a shot to win it. Well, he does now. Whereas he's been saying all week, the heater is real. Tough man to beat today. Tough man to beat for about two yeah, weeks. Tough man to beat for two weeks. It's been two weeks like this. Yeah, pretty incredible, Vince. He won the first tournament of this festival here, Borgata, for over 200,000. Now he can win the last event for nearly a million. 26 years old out of Brooklyn, New York. He calls himself a regular guy, just a normal grinder. But the dream of a lifetime is at stake here tonight. Asher has raised with 8-7 to clubs to 130. Yeah, right under the gun. The Russian and Carlos go out. Brian Yoon with a little suited connector. He won't play. And then Crazy Ray has an ace four. Ray gonna call out of the big blind. So we're gonna have a flop here. Check. Flop 10, 9, 5. Ray, he's gonna check, and Asher checks right behind him with the open end straight draw. Turn card. That gives Asher straight. Check. Check. Ray's gonna check again. Everything working for this kid. He's gonna bet 135. Hopes his opponent might have some of that. Doesn't happen. Yeah, Crazy Ray has to give it up. Another bluff, Asha? No oh. bluff there. You can looks, go see it on camera. No looks, bluff. Looks, looks to get it. It looks was like a really a bad one. A bad bluff. No king queen? No. <laughs> but I had it. I, the hand was not being folded. Jack something. There's the beautiful Danielle, one of our Royal Flesh girls, with the Hublot watch that our champion will get. What a timepiece this is, Mike. Let's get back down to the table. Action on Carlos. who's been car dead for a long time, has to fold again. Brian Yoon going out. Round to Ray. All in. He's going all in here with a jack nine. Just has to take a shot. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's see if Asher has a hand to call. Yes, he does. In fact, he goes over the top. You sure? All right. Yeah. I didn't see my car. Asher has raised it to shut out the big blind. He just wants to play against the 400,000 that Ray Cartumi has. Doesn't want to risk any more money than that. Oh. Alexander goes out. They show the cards. Oh, just, just two over. All right, but Crazy Ray from Houston, a non-professional in the granite business. Jack. He's not in that bad of shape. He's only a three to two underdog, but must win this pot to stay alive. Jack nine, eight, seven. Otherwise, he'll be walking back to Houston. Ray, can you get lucky? Not there. Queen, eight, seven on the flop. What is it? I don't know. <laughs> what do I need? A 10, a 9, or a jack, I think. 10, 9, jack. A 10 locks it up for him. A 9 or a jack gives him the lead. One time, 10. Can happy go lucky, Ray, catch? Let's take a look. It's an 8, oh. pairs the board. No. Now we're down to the river. 9 would have been a fair turn, I'm going to be honest. A lot of stuff happening there, you know? Ray needs a nine, ten, or a jack. Otherwise, he'll be our fifth place finisher. Things got crazy in here really fast. Crazy Ray, 
It's all coming down to this last card. Ray always smiling, a good sport. Four diamonds. Well, the granite man hits the stone wall here at Borgata. He's a businessman from Spring, Texas, out tonight in fifth place. You know, a very likable guy, a wonderful poker player. He's going to take home 208000 but it is back to the granite mine for him. Let's go see what he has to say. Are you happy with this finish? Yes, I am. Um, I'm proud to be here uh, today. Is, uh, this is my second final table. But I love uh, poker, and it's my hobby. And uh, I hope next uh, final table, the third one, will be first place. All right, well, congratulations on this finish today. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. With that hand, we conclude our second hour of coverage at the WPT World Championship here at Borgata. Please join us next time when we will crown the final champion of season 13. For Mike Sexton, Vince Van Patten, Tony Dunst, Matt Savage, the Royal Flush Girls, and everyone at the World Poker Tour, I'm Lynn Gilmartin. See you next time on the WPT. I don't understand what this is for. <laughs> the World Poker Tour is sponsored by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. A WPT World Champion will be crowned tonight here at Borgata. Feel like a million bucks. Easy game. Tonight at Borgata, our season ends with one final turn of a card. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lynn Gilmartin, and welcome to the conclusion of the WPT World Championship. With a $15,000 buy-in, this tournament is not for the faint of heart. And we've seen players giving it their all this week to claim the final title of season 13 on the World Poker Tour. Joining me now to give us expert analysis are Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten. Well, Lynn, we are down to four players for this championship. We lost Tony Dunn's the raw deal. You know, he had some bad beats. He's gone. But then we also lost the very popular Ray Khartoumi, the Granite Man. He busted up into little pieces. Another great player gone. We are down to four. Well, the guy that's doing it right now is the 26-year-old from Brooklyn, Asher Kniff. He's the big chip leader at the moment, but he's going to have his hands full because on his left are two WPT champions, a Russian named Alexander Lakoff, but what about a three-time WPT champion, the old-time money winner on the World Poker Tour, Carlos Mortensen, is also at the table. This is going to be a great finish. Cards are about to fly, so let's check the chip counts and get down to the table. Well, this is the final event of season 13 on the World Poker Tour. Four guys left fighting it out for the title. There you see the Skrill chip count. Asher Kniff from Brooklyn, well out in front with 6.8 million in chips. Brian Yoon from LA in second place with 3 million. Then Carlos Mortensen and the Russian Alexander Lakoff. And the winner's going to take home close to a million dollars here tonight at Regatta. And he's at 10,000. Lines 30 and 60,000. Let's go to the felt. Action on Brian Yoon from Los Angeles. He's got a pretty good ace 10. Well, Brian, the youngest player at the table at 25. He's going to raise it up to 130,000. Asher, our chip leader from Brooklyn folding. And now Alexander Lakoff. He's got ace six. He won a WPT event earlier this season in Cyprus, going for his second title this season. And he's going to fold his ace six, Carlos Mortensen. King seven of clubs. He will speculate. Makes the call. Let's go to the flop. It's a nine nine deuce. Now Carlos is going to check his king high. Brian checks behind him. Surprising going to the turn. Ooh. It's a seven. Carlos is taking the lead with nines and sevens here. And he is going to get the value bet in of 125,000. And Brian going to call him with the ace high, hoping it's the best hand, which right now it's not. Down to the river. It's another nine. So now Carlos nines full of sevens. He's going to bet 200,000. Hope the guy pays him off. Will Brian put him on a full house? That's a question. Hey, Sam. And he must put him on a hand because he laid it down. Nice lay down there by Brian. Carlos Mortensen. The Matador going after his fourth WPT title ever. Carlos Mortensen, the all-time money winner in the history of the World Poker Tour, with about $6.5 million coming into this tournament. That number's going to go up substantially. Asher has raised with ace-four. 
The Russian has gone out. Carlos out as well. Brian Yoon with a suited connector. 6-7 of hearts. Does make this call. You love to see a flop of those kind of hands. Flop king, queen, five. No help to either player. Brian checks. Asha. And he's going to make the continuation bet. 115,000, and it's going to get the job done. And what a story it is about Asher Kniff. Vince won an online satellite to get his seat into this tournament, but he did it by clicking the wrong button. He thought he was playing another tournament. The hero Brooklyn needed, but not the one they deserve. Not the one they deserve. <laughs> Couldn't be fate for the young guy. Hello, world. I'm a New Yorker, born and raised, Brooklyn boy. So, uh, came out here to chase the dream. It's very surreal to make the final table. It kind of makes the last four, five, six years of my life feel like they were worth something, you know? Like, all of the grind, all of the struggle, all of the time I put into poker that I didn't put into other things all finally feels like it was worth it. If you win this, people know who you are. Everything you do from here is kind of cream on top. Like, if you can win this, it's, it's a huge step in anyone's career. It is definitely the best week of my life. It's amazing. The best week, best two weeks, Vince. He won the first event of this Borgata Festival, got a chance to win the last. With over seven million in chip, <laughs> he's in great position to do just that. Chance of a lifetime for that young man, but action is on. Alexander, he's 42 years old. Takes his time, but finally folds. And now Carlos with a queen, three of clubs, releases the hand. So the battle of the blinds here. Brian Yoon with a queen deuce. He's just going to limp in and make the call. And our chip leader Asher looks down at two kings. And when you get pocket kings at the final table on the World Poker Tour, DraftKings puts $1,000 into your DraftKings account. Well, he is going to raise it, of course, to 180. He makes Brian Yoon give it up. So everything going right for Asher Kniff. Gary. In a season filled with highlights, the WPT and the Tiger Woods Foundation have partnered up once again for Tiger's Poker Night, an exciting charity tournament that benefits a very worthwhile cause. Take a look. How fun is this? Oh, it's incredible to have the guys all come back again. It adds validity to what we're trying to do and how we're trying to help kids. Dealers, please shuffle up the deal. Good time. Great charity. What a crowd. What a crowd. This is fun. We're here to support Tigers Foundation. It's, uh, Tiger Jam is my third year, I think. I knocked them out twice last year. No, you twice. did not. It's always been fun. It's always for a good cause. And the mission of the Tiger Woods Foundation is to provide educational opportunities for young people around the world. Education is an incredibly powerful tool when it comes to success. And Tiger has a vision, and he thinks if we can bring education resources to kids, we can really improve their lives and really improve society with it. I struggled when I was little. I had a speech impediment. I was stuttering pretty bad. I was always in the back of the class, never want to be called. That's one of the reasons why we have our foundation, the after-school programs, to help these kids. I've had a little bit of trouble in the first semester of college. They helped me and gave me advice, so it's a great support base. The program has definitely helped me define my goals and what I feel is my purpose in life by providing resources and mentors that can tap into the potential of each and every one of us. We are very impressed with what Tiger is doing and uh, we believe that uh, young people are not only our future but also our future leaders. They're prepared kids, they're obviously ambitious and those are the types of people I want to hire. Those are the future leaders of this country. Education is important because it's the catalyst to success. It represents stability for my family. It's not a tangible, uh, like, clothes or shoes. It's an investment in yourself. Education has helped me realize what I can do to help others. We're coming up on 20 years of the foundation. 131 Irwood Scholars now are off to college. We've helped over 135,000 kids just in our learning centers alone. We need events like this to not only gain more awareness, but also the funds to be able to keep helping these kids. That's what it's all about. I mean, we're here to have fun, but we're here also to help others. And that's the most important thing. 
Learn more about the Tiger Woods Foundation and the WPT's philanthropic efforts by logging on to WPTFoundation.org. It looks like action is starting back up, so I'll send it down to Mike and Vince. Well, Vince, what a great night that was, Tiger's Poker Night. Great charity for a great cause. And right now we have four players battling for this championship. A quick fold by Carlos Mortensen. And Brian Yoon with a King-10. He's on the button, but he opts to just limp in and call on the button with the King high. Asher with two sevens out of the small blind. He also just calls. Very surprising neither one of those guys raised with those hands. And now the Russian who's on the short stack with King six has gone all in. Yeah, he's got the worst hand of the three by far, but he's moved in. I call. Yoon goes out and Ash is gonna make this call with sevens. The Russian in dire straits here right now. Just over a three to one underdog to stay alive in this tournament. Dead him to a child. Oh, five, 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 five. A little crazy over there, you know? Nothing I could do. Alexander Lakoff came to this final table as the big chip leader. His tournament life on the line right now. Must get lucky to win this pot to stay alive. Nine, eight, six. Alexander with two sixes. He has a pair now, though. That's the problem. Nine is good. Nine is good. Yeah, nine is good. Yeah, and eight is the river. That's a fair card. That's okay. Nine and eight, huh? I like where your head's at. I was wondering where he was going with the nine. I was Alexander like, needs to catch a king or a six, and he does it. Oh! It's a good turn card, huh? Okay. Makes three sixes on the turn. Unbelievable draw out. But it's not over. Asher must now catch a five, a seven, or a 10 to win this pot. It's a three of hearts. And Alexander Lakoff got a double up. If you didn't limp, I call anyway. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I thought about that. When I saw that second six, that's the first thing that went through my mind. This episode of the World Poker Tour is sponsored in part by DraftKings. If you like poker and sports, then you're going to love daily fantasy sports at DraftKings. Go to DraftKings.com, enter promo code WPT, and start playing today. We are back. It's the final term of the season, the WPT World Championship. This casino is an incredible place to visit, and earlier this week, the Royal Flush Girls got to hang out in one of the suites here at Bogota, and it was spectacular. I've stayed in those myself. They are first class all the way, as are all the rooms here. Just top notch in my book. Speaking of top notch, how about Asher Kniff? He's currently sitting at the top of the chip count. 6.4 million in chips. Let's go to the felt. Action's on him. And he looks down at a pair of aces. Everything going his way. He makes it 130 to go. Hoping to get some victims. First, Alexander with a king three. And you pick up those aces. You're saying, somebody, please raise me. Please raise me. Yeah, Alexander out. Carlos with a nothing hand. Will he get fancy? Nope. They all go away. Finally called the one. <laughs> Is that aces? Really? How good am I? <laughs> nah. Well, there you see a little frustration. Even though you win the pot, you're always sick when you get no action with two aces. Blinds of 30 and 60,000. Action on Carlos, three-time WPT champion, going after his fourth title here tonight. He's got 8-5. And he'll raise to 125 to go. Now Brian Yoon with 2-3 just quickly throws him away in position on the button. Asher going to make the call here. The queen nine of diamonds and now Alexander's come over the top all in with an ace jack. Both his opponents quickly fold. Nice one. Wow, the Russian who came to this table as the chip leader. His chips have dissolved, but taken down that pot. Right back at him on Brian Yoon from Los Angeles, a king nine. He's going to raise it to 135. Asher out. Alexander going out. Carlos with king six of hearts. 
Going to make the call and look at a flop here. Brian with king nine. The great Carlos with king six. It's an ace nine deuce. Well, no help to Carlos. He checks. Brian's got middle pair with top kicker. All right, to go check, check. Ten of spades on the turn. And again, it goes check, check. River Garden. Nothing happens there with the queen. King high. Well, they check it down. Brian going to win the pot with two nines. Carlos can't seem to turn things around. He had a little momentum early on at the final table. <laughs> you see Asher with 6.2 in chips. Brian Yu now in second chip position with 2.8. Carlos in fourth chip position at the moment. All right, on to Asher. And he's got a junk hand. And he will fold it. Alexander. And he's got the ace high on the button. Going to make a button raise here. 125,000. Carlos hoping to catch a card. And he does. He catches a pair. A pair of tens. All in. Pop it up. Over the top. All in. Brian out. How much is it? 990. And will he get the action from the Russian? I wouldn't think so, Vince. We've seen him on the conservative side in this situation before. Echo. Wow, I am shocked he's making this call. He's talking to himself. Carlos is 70% favored to win this pot to double up here. And there is his wife, Pastora, his sister, Sonia, in the audience. They've got to be excited at this moment. Alexander cannot look. Well, Vince, he got all in a minute ago with king six against two sevens and won that pot. This time it's a six. Again, he flops a pair of sixes, but again, he's way behind as Carlos has two tens. Well, could we see a duplicate scenario of what happened last time when he made three sixes? Going to the turn. Can the Russian hit? No, deuce of hearts. We're down to the river. Anything but an ace or a six. Carlos Mortensen doubles up. They all seem happy. Can Carlos do it? Oh. An ace on the river. The Matador Gord right there. Wow, what a brutal beat for Carlos Mortensen to get knocked out in fourth place. Alexander, welcome to America. He is going to knock out Carlos, who's going to take home 267,000. The Matador. Let's see what he has to say with that awful beat. Can I change my pumpers? <laughs> you always have a positive attitude. Does it hurt that you didn't win your fourth title tonight? Um, if I tell you the truth, no. It's, it's always going to be another one, you know. And one of those times I'm going to make it. <laughs> I believe that you will. Yeah. Congratulations uh, again, Carlos. Thank you, man. Against you, I feel like power. Now I feel like very bad myself. I don't know why. But right. Against you, I feel like, okay, some flip. Uh, you know, I'm more fun to bad beat than Carlos, I think. That does it for Carlos Mortensen's deep run at the WPT World Championship at Borgata. Three players remain, but there is only one title. Watch them battle it out when we return. Come to battle. It's gonna be fun. So we have three luckiest players here. Yeah? Three luckiest players in the casino, I think. I'm definitely one of them. I don't know about you guys. I'm there. This isn't even real. There are 100,000 reasons to love ClubWPT.com. Because as a Club WPT VIP, you get the chance to win a share of $100,000 in cash and prizes every month. ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. Welcome back to Atlantic City. We are at Bergata for the WPT World Championship. Three players remain. Yeah, Asher Kniff, still our chip leader, 6.1 million. Alexander Lockoff with about 3 million. Brian Yoon, just under that chip count. Okay, going back down to the felt. Blinds at 30 and 60,000. There's the star of the night so far, Asher Kniff from Brooklyn, New York. Action's on him. He has an ace deuce. Yeah, I'm going to make a button raise here, 130,000 to go. Alexander goes away, and now Brian Yoon from Los Angeles with a king jack. Seems to like it. Got to make this call. Here we go. Ace, king, seven on the flop. So kings for Brian, but the bad news, aces 
for Asher. Brian quickly checking. Asher makes the continuation bet of 105,000. Brian makes the call. Going to the turn. And a six comes off. Yeah, Brian checks. I was surprised by that check by Asher. I would have bet the ace is there. Thinking my opponent had kings or a possible straighter flush draw, but four at the river. Brian checks again, and now I feel certain that Asher will bet this time. Feeling pretty good about his aces now. And indeed, he does bet him. And a pretty good bet here, Vince. 320,000. Which sort of looks like a bluff. See if Brian will pick this up or not. And it is a good read by Brian. He lays down his kings. And Asher picks up yet another pot. Uh, they're all smiles. Trying to figure out how much they can borrow if Asher wins this tournament. <laughs> all right, the blinds are going up to 40 and 80,000. Action on Alexander. He's been playing poker for 10 years. One of the great Russian players has a WPT title under his belt already. And he looks down at Queen 10 of Diamonds, going to raise it up to 175,000. Brian quickly calling with King Jack behind him. And now Asher with just a 9-7. Going to take a shot at a raise with a nothing hand. 540,000. He's trying to squeeze here, Vince. Thinking the button guy might have just made a button raise. The small blind didn't raise. He can't have much. The Russian calls it. Brian goes out. Leaves all that money out there. Wants these two guys to clash. Heads up. I'm a little surprised he didn't make that call, Vince. We have two-way action. It is a king nine deuce. Asher hits his nines. Inside straight draw for Alexander. He's got the good shot straight draw, but he's going to check. Going to the turn. Wow, it's another king. Oh, Brian's upset. He would have had three kings. Yeah, he's very dismal right now. Asher with nine's gonna check. Well, surprised he checked that hand. Remember, he three bet it before the flop, and now he's checked the flop and the turn. Alexander's gonna bet half a million with nothing. Just guts. Well, Vince, the guy's gonna have to have three kings to beat you here. Well, it's possible. <laughs> but not according to Asher. He's gonna stick around with the nines, go into the river. Deuce of spades pairs the board again. Well, again, Asher checks. Now, Alexander. Well, he is doing it, Vince. Yeah, he's going to take a shot. 700,000 he's betting. In Vince and Asher's mind, he should know the guy's got a full house or nothing here. He's just going to check down two pair if he had it. Probably check down an ace high as well. He's got to make the excellent call. Excellent read by Asher here. He figured it out perfectly. Called the Russian down. And Alexander's chip stack goes down. You just can't blame him from trying, though. Alexander showing another level. Poker giving me some satisfaction, uh, giving me power, giving me freedom, because I'm getting some money from poker and uh, I can uh, travel and do everything. Actually, Russia is big. It's not like an unusual situation that uh, a lot of Russians are uh, really good players. I think we have a lot of weak players as well, but nobody knows them. Well, we don't see too many weak players out on the tour. There's one of the strong Russian players, Renat Bogdanov. He won the Season 10 <laughs> WPT Venice event. Here tonight, rooting his buddy on. Russia has more than just great ballerinas and tennis players. They've got poker players, international stars, and Alexander could become one of the big ones tonight if he takes down his second WPT title. Back to the action we go on Brian. I guess I can tell you, for the small numbers that Russians enter in these tournaments, their results are outstanding. All right, Brian has raised to 165. Asher takes a break. Alexander now. Come on in. He is going all in with an ace-eight, Mike. Well, tough decision for Brian now, but he makes a quick call. 
He's about a dollar fifty underdog. Three to two dog here. Needs to get lucky to eliminate the Russian. See if he can do it. Alexander came in there as the chip leader. He's down to his short stack. Can his hand hold up? Here's the fluff. He gets an ace. Brian's going to have to hit two runners to win this pot. I got 14 outs. How can I miss? 14 outs, though. Outs. <laughs> Brian staying positive. All right, that's 14 outs just to have a draw to win. Ship it, baby. There you go, Alexander. How much does that they have cats and rush events. Cast episodes, play risk-free poker, and compete to win a share of 100,000 of cash and prizes every month. Play on clubwpt.com and never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. Oh, Vince, I'm still sore from that basketball game. All right, three guys left. Asher Kniff well out in front with over 8.4 million. That's the winner tonight taking home nearly $1 million. What's your biggest live score? 660. I have to win to get it. I have to win to get a new big best score, yeah. basically. Six thousand? Six hundred sixty, yeah. You? Two oh five. So you already got it. You already got it. Sick. For sure. Two oh five was last week. Oh, nice. Life's just not real. Action's going to Brian Yoon. He quickly folds. Asher now with Queen Jack. Will raise to 210. Okay, let's dance. And the Russian makes the call with an ace three. And here is the flop. It's a king, jack eight. So jacks for Asher. Well, he checks. I'm surprised he checks that. But just wants to keep the pot small until he realizes the jacks are good, which he does now after his opponent checked. Seven of spades on the turn. Now he's going to bet the jacks. 220, and it's going to work. The Russian has to walk away. And there's Ash's New York friends. And they come down to support him tonight. And so far, so good for the youngster from New York. Tony Dunstey is never afraid to speak his mind, and he's standing by in the control room now to do just that. It's the WPT World Championship edition of The Raw Deal. I'm sure you've heard the old adage, I'd rather be lucky than good. And while that's generally true, the results on the WPT this season make me think, I'd rather be good. Let's break it down. You need to be lucky to win these things, man. Sure, it's a small sample of events, but the results on the WPT this season definitely suggest that we're playing a skill game. Remember Matt Damon yelling, why do you think the same five guys make it to the final table at the World Series of Poker every year? Well, it seems like the same guys are making all our final tables too. We had three repeat champions this year, including Mohsen Sharania, Darren Elias, and Anthony Zeno. And those last two won back-to-back -back events. We had Taylor Parr dominate the California swing. Greatest poker accomplishment of my life. And hey, even I final table the championship in successive years. All of the players mentioned are professionals who invested serious time and effort into developing their game. They came from a variety of backgrounds, but all accumulated the necessary skill to repeatedly find success on the WPT. And I think it's encouraging for casual players to know that even if they're not talented yet, they can improve with practice and gradually become skillful bringing down that one in a million shot to something more obtainable. Or as one leading intellectual put it, so you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah! You got an easy <laughs> oh, oh, Tony! Boy. The weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> well, the beauty of poker is it has just the right element of skill and luck to make the game attractive to everybody where everyone thinks that they can win. That is so true. Yeah. All in. Brian, you had. You know that six of spades just popping right <laughs> off, dude. Uh, you ready for the deuce of spades? Because it's, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Reverse psychology going to the turn. Well, a seven comes off. So this gives Brian 
Four more out, he can now win the pot if a six comes off or a three comes off. Nothing else will do for him. Got two World Series of Poker bracelets to his day, but now he needs Lady Luck on his side on the river. Can he get it? Well, it's a four. So that's going to do it for Brian Yoon, the tough pro out of Los Angeles, California, finishes the night in third place. Right now, going to take home 330000 Let's go talk to him. I got an interview. Oh, I got an interview with the man. Woo! With the man. OK. No, I need luck. Good luck, my friend. I need that. Brian, 330000 Are you happy with the way you played tonight? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely happy with the way I played today. Just the cards I don't think fell in my way. So what can you do? You've had some great success in other tournaments. First time breaking through on the World Poker Tour. Mm -hmm. You think this is a sign of things to come? Yeah, hopefully. Um, I'm going to continue to play a lot of the tournaments on the World Poker Tour, and hopefully I'll get another final table. Awesome, Brian. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. We have to say goodnight to Brian Yoon, our third place finisher. But coming up, Asher Kniff and Alexander Lokov go heads up in a potentially epic duel. Who will win the nearly $1 million first place prize and be crowned WPT World Champion? We will soon find out. Thanks. Thanks. Pure monster sound, you have to hear it to believe it. Get yours today at monsterproducts.com slash WPT. Enter code WPT25 to get your special discount. Tonight's episode is sponsored by Ublow, the official watch of the World Poker Tour. The final heads-up battle of the season is about to begin at Borgata between Asher Kniff and Alexander Lokov. The Royal Flush Girls have brought out the money these two are playing for, plus a pair of monster 24K headphones and a beautiful U-Blow watch to be awarded to the WPT World Champion. Before play gets started, check out the conversation I had with both players. Now, you accidentally entered this tournament. Do you think it's fate? Uh, I'll take it if it's fate. That's fine with me. Uh, whatever works. Um, it's all really surreal. It's amazing. Now, what do you attribute to your success at this final table? I've had some good cards. Uh, been taking advantage of a few spots that I thought were good and just uh, staying focused and not letting the pressure get to me as much as I can. Asher has a bit of a lead over you going into heads-up play. What's it going to take for you to take this one down? I will uh, double up once, double up again, and uh, we'll fight in the... Good tactic, I think. All right. Well, good luck. Thank you. I need it. That's called the only tactic. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. Looking at this chip count, Asher starting out with over 10 million in chips. Alexander with under 2 million in chips. So over a 5 to 1 chip advantage right now for Asher Kniff. And these are 10. Blinds are 40, 80. Here we go. Alexander looks down at a jack, four of hearts. And he will raise to 160. Yeah, a little position raise here, but Asher's going to make the call, which is the four deuce of spades. Here come the first three. It's an ace, nine, ten. All hearts. That gives a flush to Alexander. Yeah, how about this flop for Alexander to start off heads up play? Asher with nothing, though. He checks. And you check once and let your man just suck her in. No, he's going to bet at 200. He's going to chase the American away. What are you going to do? Nice, sir. Nice flop. And Vince, one thing is a certainty. We have made history tonight. This is the first time that the heads up battle has come down to two guys whose first name start with the letter A. Uh, records just keep getting broken here on the WPT. Oh, boy. Boy, we're scrambling now, aren't we? Well, I'll tell you who's scrambling. Alexander is scrambling to cut this chip deficit. Asher this time with a 9-6. Now this time he's on the button. And he's just going to limp in and call with the 9-6. And now Alexander. Awful hand as well, 9-4 of diamonds. And he checks. So two men with awful hands going to compete with the flop. It's a king, six, deuce. Asher outflops Alexander. Good flop for Asher. He's got middle pair. Alexander checks. Asher's going to bet the two sixes here, 80,000, and he's going to win the pot. That's all you got to do. And the 
friends from Brooklyn in the house. Asher Kniff, the 26-year-old, looking good. Never had to struggle all night long so far. All right, back to this one. Alexander with a pair of sixes this time. And he is going to move it up to 200,000 to go. Asher with an awful nine deuce just mucks that. So Alexander taking down that pot. Can he come back? It's going to be a long haul. If he does, Asher looking good here at Pagata. Harry Oratunian has done it. It was just an amazing feeling. I'm normal guy, I'm not like a star. Great game. It's a dream come true. <sighs> yeah, it doesn't feel real. You show up every year and you keep getting deep. And then one year you just kind of run really good and you play really well and you win a title. Anthony Zito has done it again. Back to back championships. Like it's the greatest poker accomplishment of my life. Let the celebration begin for Griffin Paul. He is our champion. Oh, our winner's happy, Vince. Oh, they sure are. Just some <laughs> of the great moments here on the World Poker Tour. And we have a great one going right now for the WPT World <laughs> Championship. Yeah, and Asher Kniff out in front right now by a wide margin with over 10 million in chips. Alexander with less than 2 million. Still just about a 5-1 to one chip lead over his opponent. This time Asher with a jack deuce. Really? Gonna throw it away. Well, I like that play, Vince. This false. Thank you. No sense in jeopardizing any chips right now when you have this kind of chip lead. You just don't have to gamble. Well, Alexander was tickled pink. He only had 7-4. Nevertheless, we move on. Action right back on Alexander. He's got a pretty decent king 10. Not a bad hand playing heads up, that's for sure. If he goes to 160. And Asher has got a solid ace 10. Yeah, has him dominated, Vince. Taking his time, trying to read his man. All in. And he's going to go for the punishing blow. And Alexander goes out. A good lay down by him. I meant you have to say Asher is not only playing well, but he is catching the cards, too. Look at the chip count. 10.3 versus 1.6. Asher closing in on the finish line, but it could change. We will see. Action right back on Asher, this time looking down at... Let's take a look. Oh, wow. He's got ace-queen. Another big hand playing heads up. Goes to 175. And Alexander looks down at an uneventful 10-6 of hearts. I'm all in. I call. Oh, he's gone all in and a call by Asher. And Vince Asher well out in front. About a two to one favorite as the cards lie. If his ace queen holds up, he'll be our champion. Good luck, buddy. The Russian getting out of line, had to take a shot. Just hoping against hope Asher didn't have a hand. He has a big one. And right now, Asher from Brooklyn dominating this position. His father gets closer to the felt. A lot of pressure on you, buddy. A lot of pressure on you. <laughs> Here comes the flop. Now 7-5 do. So far, so good for Asher. It's a good, good window card. Alexander can hit two runners to make a straight or a flush. Catcher a 10 or a 6 to take the lead, but right now, Asher looking good. Going to the turn at Brigada. Will things change? It's a four of spades. The crowd moans because now Alexander has an open end straight. Dirty, dirty man. Well, 
even as you know, it's never easy. It's never easy. It's never Alexander easy. can now catch a three, a six, an eight, or a ten. He has given some hope and change there for Alexander. Three, six, eight, or ten. Anything else? Asher's our champ. Last card. Should be Vince. He just saw his kid win nearly a million bucks in a poker tournament. How good is life? Oh man, the rail going crazy for Asher. But Vince, take your hat off to the Russian Alexander Lockoff. Very good tournament this week. Our runner up. Father and son in an embrace. Let's go talk to Alexander right now. Alexander, you came so close, came in as a chip leader. But you still finished second. Are you satisfied with that? Uh, no. 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 For a true poker player, uh, only one uh, place in tournament is first. I fight him for first. My congratulations to Asher. He was really good. Mm, satisfaction will come later, but now I'm feeling like a big pain, like sad. I don't know. Let's talk to the season 13 WPT world champion from Brooklyn, New York, Asher Kadim. Yeah. Yeah. Asher, you gave us a quote that you believe in living life to the fullest. Will you certainly live life to the fullest this week? Congratulations on winning this event. Thank you so much, Mike. I appreciate that. It means everything that it happens here and uh, these guys all are really great players and they brought their A games today and some of the cards fell my way and what can I say? Well, I can say you're a sensational player as well, the WPT World Champion. In addition to nearly one million in cash, you also get a customized set of headphones, 24K from Monster, a beautiful Hublot watch, and you get your name engraved on the WPT Champions Cup. One more time, let's hear it for our champion, Asher Kniff. Lynn, back to you. Asher Kniff is the season 13 WPT World Champion. What a remarkable finish to a remarkable season. For Mike Sexton, Vince Van Patten, Tony Dunst, Matt Savage, the Royal Flush Girls, and everyone at the World Poker Tour, I'm Lynn Gilmartin. See you next season on the WPT. Should I go get a bag? I don't understand what this is for. <laughs> The World Poker Tour is sponsored by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the season premiere of the World Poker Tour. I'm Lynn Gilmartin. We are thrilled to be back at Choctaw Casino and Resort in Durant, Oklahoma, to kick off our 15th season. And over the years, the one thing that remains a constant, apart from Mike and Vince, of course, is the hunt for an elusive WPT title. Hi everyone, I'm Mike Sexton. Allow me to welcome you to season 15 on the World Poker Tour. Players, it's time to get the party started. Dealers, shuffle up and deal. Good luck, players. Gonna win. Guaranteed. Poker pros and locals alike entered the Grand Theatre on day 1A, including Festival of Poker free roll winner Karen Norman, who looked forward to competing on this big stage. To be playing against some pretty big name players is really exciting, and most of them are the young guns, the kids, and so to be able to beat the kids if their game is pretty exciting, I'm here to tell you. Karen was popular in the room, in no small part to the basket of lollipops she brought for her fellow players. If she gives you one of those, you don't know what that means, you're the sucker. You got me. Looking to improve on her fifth place finish last season, Mina Greco set her sights on a deeper run. Last year was completely surreal. Driving in yesterday night, I saw the WPT on a billboard off the expressway, and it just gave me chills. I'm looking forward to pushing a little harder and making it to the final table and hopefully making it to placing first. 
Another finalist from last season, two-time WPT champion Darren Elias was enjoying his return to Oklahoma. Choctaw's great, a lot of local players, guys I don't get to play with too often, so you see some interesting things and uh, it's a good property, it's fun. But it would take more than some sleight of hand to make it through the day. <laughs> get knocked out with about an hour left in the day, so frustrating day, but it's gonna happen sometimes in these re-entry things and uh, try again tomorrow. Yay, look at me, I made it. Well, one bullet, just one. I'm rich. Saved about 15,000 as far as I'm concerned. At the end of the day, 107 of the 387 entries survived to advance to day two. With just shy of 300,000 in chips, WPT finalist Steve Gross captured the chip lead beating Sonny Patel by just 700 chips. I had to work at the beginning, and then I got lucky at the end. Bullet some people. It's a good day. It's a good day. As play got underway at Choctaw, day 1B saw plenty of pros happy to play with locals. Today I have a table full of cowboys. A lot of fun with the locals. I like it out here. It's a different scene. It's a nice change of pace. And plenty of locals excited to play with the pros. Being able to sit down at a table with Mike Sexton, be able to stay up with, you know, and actually win a hand every now and then. I'm in the cattle business. I've got some land and I've got about 650 head of cattle. You know, I couldn't play with professional football or anything like that, but I can play poker. To a regular, Steve Buckner took notice of the level of concentration on the tournament floor. I travel a lot of WPT tournaments, just awfully, like, eerily quiet. And, I mean, there's a lot of tables. This is a big room. Uh, but I think that they're uh, focused, and that's why they're not talking. Season 14 WPT champion Harrison Gimble was enjoying his first visit to the casino. It's my first time in Choctaw, but I definitely come back. Everyone's pretty friendly. It's a four-day tournament, so you just got to come prepared every day to play. Midway through the day, Mike Sexton was signing copies of his new book, Life's a Gamble, for some fans. Well, we had a book signed at Choctaw here, sold out of books. I have saved one for my man, Vince Van Patten. He wrote the forward, but I don't even think he's read the book yet. The massive tournament attracted poker pros from far and wide, including the always soft-spoken Phil Hellmuth. Got it all in with the jacks. I was thinking, sweet! And the other guy had queens. That's OK. It's poker. I'm here for a couple more days. I really enjoy Chalk Dot. I like the pools. I like the fire pits. I like all the restaurants. And there's a ton of my friends down here, too. I mean, a lot of the you know great poker players are here, so, so I'll be all right. And after building up a nice stack, Mike Sexton saw his tournament run come to an end in the last level of the night. The second starting day saw 651 entries take a shot, with just 195 bagging chips. Michael Hahn had the field scattered, smothered and covered with a stack of 370,000. Good for the chip lead. were in the air on day two, several players took advantage of late registration, including Mike Sexton, who is firing his second bullet. Well, we're going to try it again. We're going to spin it up from 15 big blinds. I predict it's going to be 15 minutes. We'll be doubled up or broke, one or the other. Say la vie. While for others, like poker pro Prince Gaspard, it was perhaps seventh time's a charm? Maybe the number seven is lucky. With 22 deep, only a cowboy city that could catch me up like this, you know? It catch me with my pants down. But it was boom or bust for many players early in the day. Life's a gamble. We took a shot. We'll try again next time. When the tournament staff released the official numbers, 1,066 entries created a prize pool of over $3.6 million. 108 players would make it to the money, with first place taking home over $680,000. A lot of good players at this table, a lot of guys you see on the WPT broadcast and stuff. So definitely have my work cut out for me. DJ Alexander helped thin the field by eliminating a player after flopping a royal flush. Making royal flushes never get old. I've been running well today. 
When the field reached 109 players, the tournament entered round for round play. Each table played in orbit until the bubble was broken. During the first round, two players, Mike Cordell and Nathan Biono, were knocked out and split 108th place. I busted out pretty early during the round for round, so I have to get my buy-in back. I have to split the 60, 700, so it's not too bad. With the field in the money, play loosened up and player after player hit the payout desk. Next year. <laughs> Including two-time WPT champion Mosin Charania, WPT champion Brian Altman, and Mina Greco. Round table last year, in the money again this year. Congratulations. Yes, yes. And I'm really happy about that. Thank you so much. I know it's sad to go on. <laughs> when play ended for the day, 40 players remained. WPT champion Olivier Bousquet had a strong day too and finished with just over 1.8 million, good for third in chips. The top spot went to Randy Lister, a nurse from outside of Dallas who liked her chances going forward. Well, I knew last week I was going to win this thing. At work, I was telling people, I'm going to win this. I'm taking this home. As players sat down on day three, they were well aware of the difficult road ahead. This is a tough table here. There's, there's no slouches here. And these guys came to play. With the focus set on making the final table, a long day of poker was in store to weed the field down from 40 to six. But surprisingly, the first level saw the elimination of 15 players. Poker pros Olivier Bousquet and James Mackey each knocked out two of them to send their chip stacks soaring. The start of day chip leader, Randy Lister, then got into a big hand with season 14 best bet bounty scramble runner-up, Benjamin Zamani. After pairing her ace on the flop, Randy three bet to 850,000 and Benjamin called with his set of fives. The turn brought the seven of clubs. Randy went all in and was called by Benjamin, leaving her drawing dead. Benjamin raked in the almost five million chip pot and Randy was eliminated in 19th place. I'm disappointed, but this is the best I've done. And I feel like I, I made a good stand in, so I'll get it next year. German poker pro Bastian Fischer soon took over the chip lead in a huge hand that sent Alex Rocker home and left James Mackey with just 12 big blinds. WPT finalist Jeff Gross was poised to double up but couldn't survive his coin flip with season 14 WPT 500 winner Craig Varnell. It's frustrating to be so close and, and not get that win or especially just basically one table away from the uh, televised final table. So I'll be back at this one and other WPTs and I think I'm playing really well and uh, excited about the future. One player who refused to go quietly was James Mackey, who doubled up twice through New Jersey poker pro Jack Duong. I have got it in bed <laughs> times. <laughs> After Bastian Fisher knocked out season 14 WPT Montreal finalist AJ Gambino in 11th place, the players combined to one table. The field continued to shrink and when down to seven players, poker pro Matthew Smith was all in and called by Benjamin Zamani. Matthew needed his pocket tens to hold against the ace king of Benjamin. And after flopping a set and turning a full house, Matthew doubled up to stay alive. Several hands later, Craig Varnell called the all-in of Olivier Bousquet. Craig needed his ace-queen to improve against his opponent's pocket jacks. Olivier's hand held on the flop, but his opponent picked up a flush draw on the turn. A jack on the river gave Olivier a set, but gave Craig a flush to knock out the WPT champion just short of another final table. So I just busted in seven, which is always, you know, a combination of appreciation and gratitude for running well enough to get this far, uh, and then obviously disappointment for not having gone further. And with that, the final six were set. Bastian Fisher would lead a tenacious final table of poker pros, all looking to win their first WPT title. You never know what to expect here at WPT Choctaw. Now I'll turn it over to the real stars of the WPT, Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten. Guys, tell us, who do you think the spotlight will shine on tonight? Well, Lynn, we are down to our final six and the spotlight will be on them tonight. 
Now, these might not be the biggest names in the poker world, but I can assure you there is a lot of talent at this table tonight. Three of our finalists tonight have won WSOP bracelets, and another has won the WPT 500 at Aria. Now, the two players with by far the most live earnings in tournament poker at this table are James Mackey with 2.9 million and Ben Zamani with 2.8 million. Uh, I got him. I got the most. Those guys have also been to WPT final tables before. But Vince, even with their experience, neither of those guys are in first or second chip position tonight. Well, you're right, Mike. The chip leader is a mystery man from Germany. He's 30 years old. Bastian Fischer is his name. That's all I know about him. But I do know that he has 8.7 million in chips, and that's a lot of chips. This guy could obviously play. Let's see if the German could put the Das Boot on the rest of the field here tonight. But in second chip position, of course, with 7.5 million in chips is Craig Varnell. He's a great player. He's made a lot of money in this game, so he could play. Gonna be a lot of fun. Let's see it happen. Thanks, guys. And before the players took their seats, we grabbed a quick word with Craig. After winning the WPT 500 and playing here, I mean, it's just a big accomplishment. You know, this is amazing. This is one of the highest achievements you can have in poker. So, you know, if I won this, this would be just icing on the cake. And, Super happy, you know. Who will be the next to earn their spot on the WPT Champions Cup? Action begins right after this. James Mackey. It's really hard to win a WPT. I have a World Series poker bracelet, and getting a WPT title would be really nice. Matthew Smith. It's probably the biggest accomplishment of my poker career, especially with my stack. One mistake could definitely cost me the tournament. Craig Barnell. If I won this, like, I hope I don't cry, man. Like, I'm a pretty emotional person, you know? Bastian Fisher. Benjamin Zavani. I think I'm pretty short now. I might really definitely have to try to think a couple moves ahead. Got a bit of work to do. Jack Wong. I would be honored to be on the Champions Club. I always just imagined maybe one day it could be me. So I'm happy for this chance. What a fascinating group of players. But only one will become the WPT Choctaw Champion. Play is about to kick off, so let's head down to the final table. Well, Vince, here we go. Kickoff event of season 15 on the World Poker Tour. Well, there you see the club WPT chip count. There's the chip leader, Bastian Fischer from Germany with 8.7. Now the Andes are 20,000, flying 60 and 120. That's what they're playing for, close to $700,000 for the first place champion. Of course, they're gonna win that beautiful Ublow watch that goes along with the prize. A lot of perks to the champion, six pros fighting it out for this title. Action on Jack Duong out of New Jersey, quickly folding his hand. Now James Mackey also not gonna play. Over to Matthew Smith, the short stack at the table, he folds. Craig Varnell with a nothing hand, releases it. Over to the chip leader in the small blind. Bastian Fisher looks down at King Nine of Clubs, very surprised he wouldn't raise out of the small blind with this hand being the chip leader. Benjamin Zamani happy to see a flop. Yeah, with a 6-4. We're going to see the first three in our first hand here tonight. Yeah, flop comes ace, four, three. Bastion checks. Zamani with middle pair has to feel like they're good because you just don't put your opponent on an ace when they limp in in the small blind. So he is going to fire 120,000. Into the chip leader, but he's going to get a little stubborn making this call. So we're going to the turn. It is a 10 of diamonds. Well, again, Bastion checks. Will Zamani fire again after getting called on the flop? Yes. This guy is one tough cookie, I can tell you that. He's got over 2.8 million in live tournament winnings, just 30 years old. That is extremely impressive. He bets 315. It is going to work. Benjamin Zamani from Boca Raton, Florida, 30 years old, going to take down pot number one. Well, there you see the graphics that we're going to be using for season 15 to help you keep up with the action. Speaking of action, the arrow means the action's on that player. A minus sign means the player checked. Abbreviations for all the actions that players can take. Bet, call, raise, as you can see. And on top of it, you got the three bet. You're going to see a three. The four means four bet. All in with a big A. Win is a W. Aren't I good at this? And out, of course, is an <laughs> X. Okay, there you have it. Let's get back to the table. James Mackey. 
Hand number two, Mackey out of Kansas City, Missouri, won't play a junk hand. Now Matthew Smith, the short stack at the table. And King nine of spade. From Margate, Florida, 26 years old, lights his hand, he will raise, makes it 260 to go. Craig Varnell going out, and now Bastion again, the German, the chip leader, with a nice hand, King Jack of Clubs, and he will call it. Well, he didn't raise out of the small blind with King Nine of Clubs. Now he's calling a raise with the King Jack of Clubs. Zamani out, now Jack Duong out of Plainfield, New Jersey, 27 years old. He won't play that. Two-handed poker. Battle of the King Highs here. And the flop comes Ace, Ace, Deuce, two hearts. Let's see if Matthew in a short stack will make a continuation bet. He is doing it. Not a big bet compared to the pot size. 210,000, but enough to get the job done. As Bastion goes out, so Matthew just happy to pick up the chips. And Matthew says poker's a mentally exhausting game, but he loves it. And there you see Bastion Fisher, 8.2 million out in front. Yeah, Matthew Smith, who just won that last pot at the University of South Carolina, has a double major in finance and marketing. A very bright guy. Craig Varnell will not play this, and Bastion now. 270. And he'll make it 270 to go, but right behind him, Benjamin Zamani with a very strong ace-king. Well, how do you play it against a chip leader? Do you three bet here? Benjamin just calling, does not three bet. A little surprising. Duan going out, Mackie won't play. Matthew Smith, who just won the last hand, also releases. So heads up poker, here we go. And flop comes queen nine six with two diamonds. No help to either player. Check. Bastion checks. Bastion checks. Here comes Benjamin, didn't re-raise pre-flop, but now he's gonna bet on the flop with just ace high. Has the best hand though. 195 into the German. And the German folds the knockwurst again. So Benjamin Zamani taking that. No one hitting cards, really. Yeah, Benjamin has a World Series of Poker bracelet to his credit. He cashed eight times in the 2016 World Series of Poker. And in fact, he finished first and second in back-to-back 1,500 no-limit tournaments. That is pretty good stuff. And around to Jack Duong. Out as well. James Mackey now set up with a 9-7 of spades, likes the position, will raise it to 275. Yeah, they call him MIG, maybe because he shoots so many players down. Uh -huh. Matthew Smith going to shove all in with ace-10. How do you like that? Well, I like it. You have like three? Ronell out. Uh, 2.6. And Mackey now with the decision. Folds the hand, and Matthew Smith take it down with the shove. See, it's going to go all in. That's when it's going to check. We are just getting started here at WPT Choctaw. Stay with us. We're coming back for more. Tonight's episode is sponsored by Hublot, the official watch of the World Poker Tour, and by Dr. Pepper, the official soft drink of the World Poker Tour. What's it like to win your way into your first live WPT tournament? Just ask Club WPT qualifier Randy LaFirst. This is my first WPT event. Everything about the trip has been so wonderful. <laughs> I'm not a great poker player. <laughs> I do get a chance to play a lot on Club WPT. It's helped, I'm doing better. I've won more and more money in my other tournaments that I play in, both at home and if I go to a casino. At the party, I met Vince Van Patten, I met Mike Sexton, I met Phil Hellmuth. That was great. Club WPT is a great way to practice your game, and I definitely encourage people to get on there. There's a great chance to win some nice prizes, as I know, because I won a free trip to this tournament. If you'd like to win a seat like Randy, take the first step today. Sign up at clubwpt.com and play for $100,000 in cash and prizes every month. Never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. So six players remain, and we have a new chip leader. That would be Craig Varnell, 33 years old, with 7.8. German Bastion Fisher with about 7.7. .7. All players with well over 3 million in chips, though, so still anybody's game. Action on Jack to Wong. 
Jack's picked up a big hand, ace queen. He will raise to 275. Folded around to Bastion. He looks down at ace king. This could spell trouble for DeWong here. 800. You're going to see the three come up right there for the three bet to 800,000 for Bastion. Amani gets out of the way, so back on Duong. Can he get away from this? That's the question. Or do you re-raise and get yourself in big trouble? Wow, big lay down by Jack DeWong. Just throws the ace queen away. In poker, it's not about money you win a lot of times. It's about money you save by making those kind of lay downs. Jack has watched the World Poker Tour. He says his whole life, it's a dream come true to be here. And what a great lay down with ace queen. Yeah, Vince, maybe he's watched all those ace queens get beat here in the World Poker Tour. He just threw his right away. All right, back to the next hand. Action on James Mackey. Quick fold by him. And now Matthew Smith with ace eight of spades. And he will move it up to 260 to go into Craig Varnell, who has picked up a pair of queens. Varnell, he won our WPT 500 at Aria back in 2015. And he is going to three bet it there, as you can see by our new graphics. The three to 620,000. Bastion and Benjamin out. Duong also folding and now back on Matthew. Now Matthew, one of the short stacks at the table. Do you really want to get involved with an ace eight after a three bet? There's your answer, no. So Craig Varnell, happy to pick up the chips. There's his family in the audience there. It's his dad, Kevin. Girlfriend Denise Good is here rooting him on as well. Craig from Aurora, Colorado, been a professional just three years. He's the oldest player at the table at 33. Three different players are 30 years old exactly at this table, and a couple guys in their 20s. All right, right back at it. on Craig, and look at this. He's got pair of kings. Wow. Queens and then kings. He's getting his rush. How's this guy running? He'll raise with this. Let's see if he gets action. Couple folds behind him. Around to James Mackey. He can't call. Matthew also out. So he's got to be a little disappointed, but you take it when you can. He just feels so lucky and blessed to be a professional poker player, Craig Varnell. His dad, who flew in to watch him tonight and is rooting for him, gave him some advice, Vince. He urged him not to play poker for a living. <laughs> Craig went against Pop's wishes and, and it's certainly been a good choice for him thus far in his career. Yeah, that father's advice never works out. <laughs> Get to the poker table. Well, Craig's been a pro for three years. He has 843,000 in lifetime tournament winnings prior to this tournament. So that number's going up, but that's a pretty good batting average for such a young pro. Well, Move it on, Benjamin, with ace jack raised, and Jack Duong behind him with the pair of kings this time. We are seeing some big hands at this final table so far. I think we're gonna see another three come up on the graphics. There it is, a three bet by Jack Duong to 625,000. Mackie and Matthew out. Craig can't play that mess. Now back around to Benjamin Zamani. Just staring his opponent down, as you can see. So far, I've seen Duong play pretty solid and pretty tight here. Do you really want to get involved with this guy with an ace jack? He could afford to do it. He's got over 8.5 million in chips to speculate for a few hundred thousand more. Will he do it? Nope. So Zamani lays it down. So Jack Duong, the short stack at the table, picking that one up. Six players competing at WPT Choctaw. We're coming back for more action in just a moment on the World Poker Tour. Everyone just assumes I'm really good at math, but I'm totally bad at math. I can't calculate hot odds like anything at all. I'm more of like a feel player. Obviously, I want to be the champion. I'm super excited and anxious and nervous. I'm hoping I'm gonna let my cards do the talking. I might do some kind of big bluff or something, but I'm just gonna go with my read and listen to my heart at the moment. And I just hope I can get some lucky breaks from the cards, because yeah, that helps. We are back at Choctaw. That's Jack Duong, talented young professional poker player. Craig Varnell is the chip leader with 8.3, but right behind him, with equal amount of money, Bastion Fisher, the German, with 8.3. All right, Jack DeWong sitting in fifth chip position at the moment, but looks down at ace-king of diamonds. Big slick. 
He's going nowhere with this hand. Raise it up to 275,000. Mackey out now. Matthew Smith with an ace 10. Now well, he's going to save his chips. Very good lay down. And a pair of deuces for Craig. Got to think he'll speculate with that. Well, you're the chip leader. You're in position. You're on the button. I think small pairs are pretty easy to play, so he's going to make the call. You have a chance to win a lot of money with them if you flop a set. So we're heads up here. Ace King versus two deuces. Now flop comes queen, queen four with two diamonds, so Jack with the nut flush draw checks. Very surprised at that check. Perhaps he's going to try to trap his man. The deuces will bet it. Now what will Jack do? Jack with an okie dokie call. Oh, I'm very surprised he wouldn't raise here with the four flush. Let's see if he catches his flush. Mm, six of spades, so no flush appearing. And check again. And the deuces out in front. Also going to check. Down the river we go. Can Jack get lucky? No, nine of spades. Thanks, Ace King could have some showdown value. Both players check. The two deuces are going to win this pot. And Jack DeWong's lack of aggressiveness might have cost him that pot, Thanks. Well, he's kind of short stack. Just didn't gamble with the chip leader. And it backfired a little bit. Craig Varnell takes down another pot. Deuces never loses. <laughs> <laughs> whoop, whoop. Girlfriend Denise whooping it up over there. All right, and the price of poker is going up with a $25,000 ante, and the blinds are going to be $75,150 to make this more intriguing. Well, it's $375,000 around to play now, and that's if you don't play a pot. So with the blinds up here like this, you have to mix it up, Vince. Just can't sit back and wait for aces and kings, or you'll get blinded down. Quick fold by Mackie Matthew. Queen Deuce won't play. Craig even going out. Over to Bastion. He's on the button. Going to raise it up here with a jack six. A button raise, as we call it. Yeah, Zamani folding. And Jack Duong. Well, we've seen him play so conservative so far, but he quickly calls out of the big blind here with a jack eight. Let's see who will get lucky. The flop's a nine nine ace. And Jack's going to check it and. Quick continuation bet by Bastion. Now, Bench, was that too quick? Yes. Yes, yeah, that's a tell. Jack didn't pick up on it. He lays his hand down. And we'll look back as a confirmation that he did not have <laughs> a strong hand he, because he's proud of himself. He's saying, look at look what I won with. Sometimes when they bet real fast, folks, they're trying to represent strength when really they don't have it. I'd say about 90% of the time. 10% of the time, <laughs> you get those very tricky players that will do a reversal, and it's quite effective. You're going to give hope to all. If you can pick up these tails, anybody can. <laughs> all right, Craig Varnell, well out in front now at 9.2 million. Down to the felt we go. Matthew Smith. Yeah, I think so. Poker pro out of Margate, Florida. Tough player. He will not play this one. Craig, our chip leader, going out. And now Bastion. You know, he takes a breather. Zamani would like to play, but can't with an 8-4. So the battle of the blinds here. Jack has a 6-4 of spades, and he likes his position. He's going to raise with it. Makes it 400,000 to go. But Mackey's going to stick around with the queen nine. Quickly calls. And the flop is a king, Jack, eight, two diamonds, no help to either player. And Jack Duong, not even hesitating, going to bet a half a million. Well, James has the gut shot straight draw, but he's going to give it up. So aggressiveness paying off there for Jack Duong, picking up that pot. Absolutely. They are playing with nothing and winning. That's what you do on the WPT. We're coming back for more action for WPT Chata in just a moment. Stay with us. Vince, real poker players are sick of the all-in fest on those other social poker sites, so they're switching to PlayWPT.com. No more waiting for pocket aces and praying for them to hold up. 
That's not poker. That's right. Play WPT poker, where skill matters. I'm Caitlin Howe, and we are here at the Choctaw Casino Resort in Durant, Oklahoma. Now, I am just blown away by this property. There are so many gaming options, and you can have fun as an entire family here at the District Entertainment Zone. There is a 20-lane bowling alley, a movie theater, sports bar, you can play a game of laser tag, and there's even a 3,600 square foot arcade. We are having so much fun here at the district. Next time you're in Choctaw, you've got to come check this out. We're back here on the World Poker Tour at Choctaw. Craig Varnell right now is the chip leader. Yeah, Bastion Fisher in second chip position. Matthew Smith bringing up the rear right now. Needs to make something happen fast. But let's go down to the felt six players battling for this championship. And Bastion Fisher with an ace deuce from Germany. Tough player will fold Benjamin Zamani also out. And yeah, Jack folding as well. And James Mackey on the button going to make a raise here. 350,000. Matthew Smith folding and now Craig Varnell in the big blind. He can afford to speculate and he does so. King five versus four five. Here we go with the flop. It's at ace seven three. Well, no help for James. Does give Craig a two-way straight draw. He checks. Continuation bet made by James here. 275,000. Wouldn't be shocked at all if Craig check raised here with the two-way straight draw. But just calls. Calling, hoping to get lucky on the turn. Let's take a look. No, seven pairs the board. Well, Craig checks again. James checking right behind him. Now the eight of hearts comes off, so three hearts out there. I feel like you just have to go with your gut sometimes. Sometimes you're wrong, but sometimes you're right. And usually your first instinct is usually the right instinct, you know? Like, you just have to, like, go with it, you know? Well, the instinct here is if he checks, he has no chance to win the pot with a five high, so he is going to take a stab at it. Yeah, he's going to go with a 675, and it's going to work. So nice bet on the river there by Craig to take down that pot. Everything going his way, winning with nothing hands. Get him, boy. As his family loves it. And he says his hobbies are sports, playing with dogs. He likes that, likes to travel. On to the next hand, James Mackey with a pair of tens this time. He'll make it 350 to go. Matthew out. And Craig out. Over to Bastion on the button. He's got the ace high. He's got position. James just staring him down, but Bastion gives it up. Now Benjamin Zamani won't play that junk into Jack. He's got an attractive queen jack of hearts, and he'll play. So we're going to have a flop here. It's a queen jack versus two tens. King six deuce, no help to either player. Jack checks. And James checks very surprised by that check. Absolutely shocking, and it's going to backfire on him as a queen hits the turn, hitting Jack. He checks it. Probably going to cost him the pot. Well, James checks again. Now the board pairs queen, so now you're going to see the Wong bet here for sure. Three of a kind. And most likely get paid offense. He's been gifted this one. 450,000. Bad non-bet on the flop by James Mackey. And now, don't do it. Yep, he's going to do the right thing finally and gets out of the way, folds the hand. You have to put your opponent on a king or a queen to fold there. Mackey did that, so the wrong picking up the pot. He's a short stack, but coming back, six players remain. Fans, people ask all the time. Can you really win on Club WPT? Well, Mike, with $100,000 worth of cash and prizes available every month, the answer is yes. Find out for yourself. Sign up at clubwpt.com. It's a good thing season 15 on the WPT has started back up because Tony Dunst still has a lot to say in the raw deal. Sometimes you play a hand where the question isn't whether you should bluff, but when. 
These are usually situations where your opponent can't have much, but you also can't win at showdown. So you know you're going to be bluffing, and your main job in the hand is figuring out which type of bluff is most likely to get a fold. So did Craig Varnell choose the right moment to bluff? Let's break it down. Craig is currently our chip leader, and calls a raise in the big blind with 5-4 after James Mackey raises the button. When Craig checks the ace-7-3 flop, he knows James will be continuation betting that texture most of the time. Clearly, Craig is going to continue, and he'll need to bluff if he doesn't make a straight. I like that Craig starts by calling the flop, since there's very few strong hands he can have that would plausibly check raise here. When the turn pairs the seven, I actually think Craig should be leading out with his entire range. The seven is a much better card for Craig than James, and it's going to cause James to check the turn and get a free river most of the time. By leading out, Craig blocks James from realizing equity with most of his hands. That said, checking the turn is no serious error, and not surprisingly, James checks behind. When the river brings an eight, Craig's situation mandates a bet, since he can never win with five high, and because James will have plenty of hands that can't call his bet. Now, although the hand ends with an effective bluff from Craig, our goal in poker is to always make the optimal decision. So while bluffing the river is surely a winning strategy here, I'd argue that bluffing the turn is the optimal one. Well said, Tony. And we are back here at WPT Choctaw. Six players remain battling for this championship. Craig Varnell's the chip leader with close to 10 million. Yeah, Craig won the WPT 500 at Aria back in 2015, trying to add a WPT title to his resume as well here at Choctaw. Let's see if he can do it. Yeah, quick fold by Matthew. Craig also going out. Bastion not playing. And there's Zamane on the button. Going to give up a queen eight. So the battle of the blinds here. Jack DeWong going to limp in with a 10-9. And James going to have none of that, Benzi. He's going to raise here with the queen 10 of spade. And this is the problem when you try to limp in against good players. They just don't let you see many flops. They're going to raise it, and you're just going to burn up your money. Mackey going to take down that pot. So the lesson is, if you're up against a real strong player in the big blind, don't limp in the small blind. Raise if you're coming in the pot. James Mackey has made close to three million in worldwide earnings. Very impressive. And we move on. A quick fold by our chip leader, Craig. Bastion, who came in as the chip leader, now in second chip position, going out. And now Ben Zamani's finally picking up Pretty decent. King 10. He'll raise to 375. Jack goes out. Mackey not playing. But Matthew Smith with a little suited connector. Nine, eight of spades. His problem is Vince, he's on the short stack here. He makes this call. He's going to have about 10, 11 big blinds left is all he has. So he does make the call. Will he get lucky? Plump comes ace, queen five. Two clubs. Disappointment for Matthew. He checks. And it goes check, check. A surprise the money would check that flop. Now Queen comes off. Pairs the board. Matthew checking again. Well, Zamonic, I don't blame him for checking now. He's got check down value with the king high. Three of clubs comes off, so three clubs out there as well. And Matthew gonna just give this up with another check. I don't understand why Zamani's betting here. I mean, what are you going to get paid off with other than something that's going to beat you? 475, he bets, and of course it's going to work. Well, I guess the purpose of betting, you don't have to show your cards. Nobody knows what you had. Ben Zamani is third time at the WPT final table. I finished second at Best Bet Jacksonville last season. Second to Tyler Patterson, one of the most popular pros out on tour. He had to take down a championship. He'd love to tonight, of course. Let's move down to the pit again. And Bastion Fisher this time, first to act. And he's got the 9-10. Won't play it. And Zamani with the ace eight of clubs is going to raise here, I'm guessing. There is the raise to 350,000. Might be bad timing because right behind him, Jack Duong with a pair of kings. He's going to play it sneaky, just calling. Wow. Mackey gets out of the way, and now Matthew Smith with a pair of nines. All in. She's going all in. 
He's only got 11 big blinds. You can't blame him for going all in there. Trade goes out. Which is it? One point four to make the call, but with a man behind him, I don't think he will. He gives it up, but a snap call by Jack. And Matthew sees the bad news. Not only does his opponent have the overpair, they're in the same suits as his, meaning he can't make a flush to win the pot either. So Matthew, right now, in jeopardy of going out in sixth place. You got my suits covered too. I'm just <laughs> just at least give me red nines, you know. Nothing he can do. Both flushes are cut off. He's just gonna have to get lucky, try to spike a nine. Pair over pair. Let's take a look at the 754. No luck for Matthew. Man, I could backdoor straight. Must do that or catch a nine, otherwise he'll be our sixth place finisher. Jack looking good. Turn cart is a three. I'll take a six. Let's chop it up. Now if a six comes off, they would split the pot as both players would have a seven high straight. Matthew needs a nine to win the pot, a six to chop the pot. Chop on, chop on. Oh, yeah. Six or nine. Six or nine. Crazy things happen here on the WPT. Let's take a look at the river. Breathe, Jack, breathe. <laughs> Jack sweating it out, he's in front. Can he break his man? River card is an eight of diamonds. So that's gonna do it for Matthew Smith from Margate, Florida. The youngest player at the table at 26, out tonight in sixth place. Yeah, Matthew's gonna take over 134,000. One player already chopped out of here at Choctaw. Let's go talk to him. A little disappointed, of course, but there's nothing much I can do about that. And Matthew Smith is the first to fall. Well, that hand marks the end of tonight's coverage from Durant, Oklahoma, and Choctaw Casino and Resort. For Mike Sexton, Vince Van Patten, Tony Dunst, and everyone at the World Poker Tour, I'm Lynn Gilmartin. See you next time on the WPT. The World Poker Tour is sponsored by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. In Oklahoma, the battle for WPT glory continues. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the World Poker Tour. I'm Lynn Gilmartin. The final table here at WPT Choctaw has delivered non-stop entertainment. And before we go back down to the table, I'll turn to Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten to set the stage for us. Well, Lynn, it's been a terrific final table so far. Matthew Smith went out in sixth place. Our current chip leader from Aurora, Colorado, is Craig Varnell. He started in second chip position. He's now the chip leader. The guy that came to the final table as chip leader, Bastian Fisher, now sits in second place. But the other three players that are left all have a WSOP bracelet to their credit. Vince, we have a very talented bunch that are left in this tournament. You're so right, Mike. These guys are really playing the game at a very, very high level. They're hopeful that one of these players, our champion, will become a big name in the game. No doubt about it. Who's it going to be? Well said, guys. And with the nearly $700,000 first place prize on the line, we're sure to see a lot of action. So let's get back to the game. Well, this is the kickoff event of season 15 on the World Poker Tour. There you see the Club WPT chip count. Five players left. Craig Varnell out in front with 9.5 million in chips going for his first WPT title here. Winner's going to take home close to 700,000. And you also win that beautiful You Blow timepiece if you happen to take home this championship. So a lot at stake. And he's a 25,000 blind, 75, 150. Action on Jack Duong. Quickly folds his hand. James Mackey also going out. Where Craig Varnell, he's out. So Bastian Fisher, who came to the final table as the chip leader, is going to limp in in the small blind here with ace high. And Benjamin Zamani doesn't raise out of the big blind, also has ace high. Well, flop comes five, three deuce with two spades. Bastion gonna bet right out with the wheel draw. Benjamin has the same drawing hand, of course. He's out kicked, however, with his ace high. But he is gonna make the call. So we're going to the turn. Well, the ace of spade comes off. Now, both players made two aces, but with a possible straight and possible flush out there, I don't think they're going to go crazy about their two aces. And yeah, the German's going to check it, and also Zamani going to the river. Let's see who gets lucky at eight. So that gives two pair to Bastion. 
Well, his opponent didn't bet on the turn, so hoping he's not kind of straight or flush. He's going to bet aces and eights. Too bad. And he's going to win the pot with it. Bastion chose ace just with the two aces. Throws his hand away, so Bastion Fisher picking up a pot. Bastion, a 30-year-old from Detmold, Germany. He's had 45 caches, mostly in Europe and Las Vegas. That's a lot of caches. Well, it's his second WPT cache, his first WPT final table. And we move on. It's on him this time to act first. Quick fold. Benjamin Zamani also going out. Jack Duong from Jersey also folding. No. Craig Varnell getting a walk. No way. I gotta show the camera the camera. Oh my God. Oh boy. And he looks at two kings, says, I can't believe it. Great hand by me. First walk anybody's gotten today. It's like the first walk I've had this whole tournament. That's insane. You're happy, but get no value for it. Disappointing. Well, there you see some of the new graphics we're gonna use here on season 15. The action button means whose turn it is. We abbreviate the actions that players will take. You see a three for a three bet, a four for a four bet. So just a little bit to help you out to follow the action. All right, back to the money pit. Jack Duong picking up a pair of sixes in first position. Jack from Jersey's gonna raise it. He makes it 350 to go. Mackey's gone out, but Craig Varnell behind him has a pair of tens. Well, Vince, there's no doubt who's picked up the most hands at this final table so far. Craig Varnell has that title, and that's one you'd love to have if you reach the final table, I can tell you that. And he is gonna three bet it here to 750,000. You see the number three next to it? That's for a three bet. Bastion and Zamani going out, so back on the sixes. That's Jack Duong. And Jack, you can see that little arrow. That means it's on Jack to make a decision, and he will speculate. He will call with the sixes, hoping to get lucky on a flop. Well, I don't blame him. I would have called, too. Let's see what the flop is. Well, flop is queen, eight, seven. Three over cards of the two sixes, so he checks. Just one over card to Craig's pair, so he is going to bet 600,000. Wants to find out where he is. And that's probably going to do it for Jack, I'm guessing. Jack says, everybody thinks I'm a math guy, but I'm not. I'm more of an instinct guy, and this time, instincts are right. He goes away. So Craig Varnell extending his chip lead. There's his dad, Kevin, his girlfriend, Denise. They flew in to watch him play at this final table. Rooting him on. That's nice. Your dad has a ponytail. Got to love that. <laughs> uh... Well, his dad encouraged him not to play poker for a living, Vince, three years ago when he told him that's what he wanted to do, but he's been very pleased with the results, and Craig Varnell says, I absolutely love my life. It's just working out great so far, and certainly if he wins a WPT title tonight, it'll be even better. Benjamin Zamani now, thinking about a junk can. Nope, goes away. And Jack out as well. Or to James Mackey, they call him Mig because he shoots down so many players when he plays poker. He will call it, try to get in cheap. Well, just limps in the small blind. I'm very surprised Craig wouldn't raise out of the big blind with ace high there, but opts to check and see a flop. Now flop comes ace, queen, jack. Now James Mackey's just not gonna put his opponent on big cards like that because he didn't raise him before the flop. Well, that is the strength of the disguise that Craig has done. He is making the call, of course, four spades on the turn. Mackey now makes a pair of fours on the turn, but he's trying to represent more than those fours. 375, he's betting. Oh. And a quick call by Varnell. So we're going to the river. It's a matter of Mackey's going to shut down or not. He is indeed. It goes check, check. Win. Craig Varnell going to win the pot with two aces. And because he limped in before the flop, you just don't put him on an ace, Vince. That's why Mackey took a couple stabs at that pot. And that is why it's so great to change up the game, mix it up at times. Recently in New York City, WPT Foundation partnered with Education Reform Now to present their annual Take Them to School Poker Tournament, and it was such a fun night. Check it out. My name is Shavar Jeffries. I'm president of Education Reform Now, and we work each and every day to make sure that all children in our country have access to a great public school. There are folks who have been betting against our children. 
but you're here today betting on them, and I'm confident that together we're going to be able to make a difference in the education of our children. The dreams and the visions of our kids are, are going to be limitless when they have a sound education, so we're here to support and have a great time. Get this. Let's do it, Benny. Let's shoot down these athletes that are here. John didn't play very fast. You were a lot faster on the court, I gotta tell you the truth. Oh yeah, this is a great tournament. I love playing here. It's just a fun environment. Everybody would really enjoy this. Having a great time. I look forward to this event all year. Poker is like one of my favorite things. What we really look for is charities that uh, really have a direct impact on people's lives. And you can see from the people here today, the devotion that they have to making sure that the education system is greatly improved. Education Reform Now works really closely with local communities. Parents have a voice in the process, teachers have a voice in the process, and local policymakers can really weigh in based on what their constituents are telling them. We believe that our mission is connected to better futures for our children. And we believe that a better future for our children is connected to a better future for our country. Thank you once again to everybody who played this magnificent Taking to School charity poker event. We'll see you next year. You can find out more about WPT's charitable efforts at WPTFoundation.org. Cards are back in the air, so I'll send it down to Mike and Vince. Well, Vince, we just had a great night. So great to see the Wall Street guys superstar athletes come out and support this venue. Now right back to it. Look at this. Benjamin Zamani with ace-10 first position, but he quickly folds. Interesting. And Jack behind him with a four or five of clubs is going to make a raise to 350. Well, notice how James Mackey shot his eyes over there at Jack. All in. Wow. And he's going over the top all in with just an ace-8 off suit here. Bold play by Mackey. That little A represents all in. Of course, next to James. So he has pushed all in, and Jack has got to push all out. Man, I can't call another three million with just five high, but what timing by Mackey there to move all in. Craig Barnell, as you can see, nearly 12 million in chips, widening his chip lead with five players left. Zamani now on the short stack here. Into James Mackey. He's from Kansas City, Missouri. 30 years old, what a player. And he quickly goes out. Craig, also getting out of the way. Bastion with the button. He's from Germany, came in as the chip leader. He has raised it with a 7-5, and now behind him, Benjamin on the short stack here has King Jack. Well, Benjamin, another 30-year-old with nearly three million in live tournament winnings. All in. And he is going over the top all in. A great read by him as well. Jack out. And Bastion can't compete with the 7-5. So good timing by Benjamin Zamani. Well, it gives you a glimpse of why Mackey and Zamani have nearly 3 million in career tournament live winnings when they're able to read their opponents like that and move all in over the top with Ace-8 offsuit and King Jack offsuit. Well, five players going at it here at WPT Choctaw. Tonight's episode is sponsored by Hublot, the official watch of the World Poker Tour. And by Dr. Pepper, the official soft drink of the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to WPT Choctaw, where the air is clear, the game is clean, and the stakes are high. We are having a great time. What an event, huh, Mike? Well, it really is, Vince. Good battle going on here at Choctaw. Two players at the table with by far the most career earnings in live tournament poker are James Mackey and Benjamin Zamani. But Vince, live. they're sitting in fourth and fifth chip position at the moment. So forget about all that experience. You better get a hold of some chips. 
All right, action on James Mackey, and with just a jack 10, we'll raise to 325 to go. Craig goes out. Over to Bastion. Looks down at the two snowmen. How much did you stop that with? Like three point? Yeah, just under four, 3.8. Young German came into this final table as the chip leader. He just calls, though. Oh. Snap all in by Benjamin here. Over the top of both of them. Mackey quickly out. Back on Bastion with those snowmen. Uh, Vince, in his mind, he knows the best he can be in is a race. And he could be completely dominated here an over pair, so. Bastion cannot compete. He's going to lay this one down as well. Same hand. Hmm? Same hand. As Amani said, we had the same hand. I don't think so. Not exactly. Two eights, right? Wow. He called his hand. You see my hand? <laughs> uh, this is going to put an element of doubt in Bastion's mind. Can he really read that well? What? Hmm? Huh? You see that, he's just questioning, how could that guy know what I had? Well, he's good, that's why. Taking it back there a bit. Clairvoyancy at this table. We move on, quick fold by Craig, and now Bastion, uh, wish he had those eights back. Fold, Samani out. And Jack has picked up ace, jack of diamonds. He likes it, he raises it to 400. And James Mackey behind him with a king jack. And he's going to make the call to see a flop. So Jack dominating right now. Ace jack versus king jack. And the flop comes king 5-4 with two diamonds. You're going to see a big pot here, folks. James has top pair. Jack has the nut flush draw. He leads out in bets. 425. When you call raises before the flop of the King Jack and it comes King 5-4, you're not going anywhere. Mackey going to raise here with the two kings, and I'll be shocked if Jack DeWong doesn't move all in over the top here. One. All and he does. Okay. Call. Mackey makes the call with the two kings. Mackey, a slight favorite here, 54% to win this pot. Wow, Mackey rolling his eyes. And the six on the turn, so no diamond for Jack. James is very lucky against me when he gets in bad. He, two times I had him all in, and he had the worst of it. I had him crushed, dominated, and he sucked out on me. And then the one time he had me all in, he was ahead, and I sucked out him. The dynamic is whoever gets in bad is uh, usually going to come out ahead. Let's see what happens now. And River Card, please. River Card, can Jack knock out his man? It's a four hearts. It's not going to work that way. So James Mackey going to double up. I just saw red at first. I can assure you he'll be a force to be reckoned with now if he gets a few chips. And he has put Jack on the respirator. Jack crushed there. Well, Vince, I don't fault his play at all. I would have played it the same way. It's unfortunate. His opponent did have top pair and that he couldn't make a hand. Jack Twong in a heap of trouble at this point. He didn't even have two big blinds, Vince. That's got to hurt. Very, very sad. Actions on Bastion. Quick fold by him. Benjamin Zamani with a king 10. Just calls. And Jack. I just don't know what hand you can possibly throw away here in this spot, <laughs> getting this kind of value. Got a queen three. He's reeking with disappointment. And Vince, he just knows he's going to have to get lucky to win a pot, so you might as well win it where you're getting multi-way action. Yeah, no one's going to raise this. James coming with ace two, and Craig, even Craig with a silly nine three, wants to eliminate Jack. They're all ganging up on poor Jack. Jack DeWong has a chance to quadruple up. You don't get that opportunity very often when you're all in. All you need is a little magic on the flop, and the turn, and the river. Well, yeah, he needs a lot of magic, Vince, right now. All right, let's see the flop. Four players, one player's all in. 
Now flop eight six five, incredible. Doesn't help anybody. And when that's the case and there's no side pot, it's generally checked down. You're hoping that one of the three of you that are still left in the pot with chips can bust the other guy where you move up in chip count. Check. Eight on the turn. Check. Jack would have to hit a queen to get out of this alive. Three would do it for him as well. Let's go to the river. It's going to be a seven of diamonds. Check. They're all going to check. Ace high. Truth. Straight's good. So Craig Varnell takes down the pot, and that's going to do it for Jack DeWan, the 27-year-old from South Plainfield, New Jersey, out tonight in fifth place. He's going to pick up 175000 but another victim slammed out of Choctaw. Let's go talk to him. This one, I love making it this deep. Uh, I never made it this deep in WBT. I'm a little sad right now. I really wanted to win this one, and it didn't work out this time. What I gained most from this experience is I got my confidence in my game back, and if I keep playing well, I think I'll be back. Well, Jack Duong just couldn't get it going tonight. Four players still remain in the hunt for the title here at WPT Choctaw. When the WPT joined us here at the property last season, we were just uh, finishing up one phase of our expansion. Since then, we've opened the spa at Choctaw Casino Resort, which is a 40,000 plus square foot full amenity spa. And we've opened the district, which is a family friendly area at the south end of the casino. We want to provide excitement and we want people to leave saying, wow, that was really awesome. Well, Choctaw has it all. Not only great poker and great tournaments, but phenomenal spa now. The district is great for the kids and games. A lot of fun here at Choctaw. Yeah, I love it here. I tell you some great poker, but on top of that, the food courts are everywhere. All kinds of great food. Down to four players. The blinds are going up to one and 200 with a $25,000 ante. Action on Craig, the chip leader, and he's gonna raise with a jack. 10 of diamonds makes it 500,000 to go. Bastion Fisher going out. All in. Here goes Benjamin moving all in with two threes. Mackie gets out of the way and back on Craig with the Jack Ten of Diamonds. I'm well, going to cost him another two million to make the call. No gamble, no future. No gamble, no future. He's gambling with the Jack Ten. He loves Ben's got the two threes where he's in a race situation. It's about even money as to who wins this pot from here. Come on, boy. Craig's family rooting him on to break Zamani. Zamani, of course, third time at a final table on the World Poker Tour. Never a champion. It's Poker Life on the line right now with five cards to come. Here's the first three. Well, so far, so good for Zamani. Flop is ace, king, six, all spades. Benjamin with the spade. Craig with the jack, ten, looking for a queen, jack, or a ten that's not a spade. Going to the turn. It's safe, seven of hearts. Benjamin Zamani with the silly little threes. It could hold up. He's a favorite going to the river. It's an eight of hearts. Zamani's going to win this. So Zamani doubling up. Much to the light of his fans in the house. Benjamin, of course, finished the runner-up last season at Best Bet Jacksonville, looking for his first WPT title. Still got a shot. That's it. One thing that I do better for sure than most other players is adjust to how other people are perceiving me. We should play show one every hand. What do you guys think? You're the last person I'd expect that idea to come from. Some people might think I'm really crazy, and some people might just think I'm like tight aggressive. I'm sure my game has a lot of weaknesses, but let's not talk about those. The best man definitely does not always win in poker, so having cards on your side and the right amount of crazy definitely can go a long way. We've seen him play a lot. He plays fearless poker. Very impressive. Four players left, and I can assure you the other three, not happy at all to see Benjamin Zamani double up. He is one tough customer. They'd like to see him gone for a couple reasons, Vince. A, he's very good. B, they move up in prize money substantially. Next guy out gets 230000 but third place pays over 306000 But Vince, don't buy all that garbage about he's got a lot of weaknesses in the game. Not true. All right, Mackie gonna raise with a nothing 6-5. Called by Craig. And now Bastion. 
Uh, can't imagine he's not going to join the party here out of the big blind. He's going to stumble around and make this call. So we have three-way action here in a four-handed game. And flop comes king, queen, jack, two diamonds. Bastion with the four flush. He's going to check it. They all check. An offsuit three comes off. Craig with the best hand with ace high right now, but he can't stand any action, that's for sure. And he's checked it in Bastion. He's going to come out of the woodwork and make a bet. 775. Man, this is a nice bet by him. I mean, if he get calls, he's got a lot of outs to win the pot. But they run away, so Bastion takes it down by betting on the turn. Well done for him. And with it, he's inherited the chip lead. Came to this final table as chip leader. He's got it again. 10.3 million in chips. Couple folds around to Bastion again. With just a 6 7, gonna call. Now Benjamin picking up the real hand. Pair of jacks. He's gonna move it to 475 total. Bastion will splash around. He'll speculate. He'll say a little prayer. Now flop comes 6 5 deuce with two spades. So Bastion, with top pair and a backdoor straight and flush draw, checks it, but Zamani checks right behind him with the over pair. Now the board pairs fives. Yeah, very surprised at the check on the flop by Zamani. Again, Bastion's going to check. Wow. I can't believe Zamani checks again. How can he give his opponent a free card here? Another five on the river. A full house for both players here. Bastion has to bet here. He's got to think his opponent's got ace king, ace queen, ace jack, something like that, where he could well pay you off here by betting. And certainly that's what he's doing. 650,000. Zamani's saying, wait, do you really have a five? Did you just pick up a five? Don't do this to me. And it's just going to call. A little surprised he didn't raise, Vince. Well, you couldn't have played that any more timid than Benjamin Zamani did there. Uh, James Mack is even laughing about it. Never be too careful. <laughs> well, I think he did play that hand a little too careful, Vince. I think he left some money on the table by not betting on the turn or raising on the river. When he was thinking and then he called, he had to think there's no way he could lose. It's hard. It's hard to lose in that spot. I'm playing on ClubWPT.com. Yes, and I'm playing on ClubWPT.com. Oh, I'm not playing on ClubWPT.com. I'm crushing it. ClubWPT.com, never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. Welcome back to Oklahoma for the WPT Choctaw, where four players remain. Pretty cool, the logo's on the side of the building, Vince. Pretty cool for these guys to be fighting it out for a WPT title. Four players left. Over 681,000 to our champion. Craig Varnell from Aurora, Colorado. is the chip leader with 10.3. Let's go to the felt. Bastion Fisher from Germany with a pair of fours. Bastion in second chip position right now, but going to raise it up here with the cold 44s to 450,000. Zamani going out. James Mackey from Kansas City. Well, he's got a pretty solid king tennis spades. Well, he's facing a raise in front of him, but doesn't phase him, Vince. He three bets it with a king ten here. 1.2 million. Gets Craig to go out and now back on Bastion with the fours. Nope, he won't play. I'm surprised he wouldn't even see a flop with that. Opted to lay it down. So nice three bet there by James Mackey. Well, Vince. It's a new season, and the WPT has already hit the ground running with a series of WPT national events held overseas. First, we traveled to Asia at the Paradise Casino at Jeju Grand in South Korea. And then it was over to Europe with stops at Dust Till Dawn Poker and Casino in Nottingham, England, Le Corset Casino, Barriere de Cannes in France, the Grand Casino Brussels Viage in Belgium, and in Spain, we held our first ever multi-venue series where players could compete in the WPT National Iberia Series across the country, where Jose Lopez emerged victorious, winning 80,000 euros. 
We also held a series of WPT Deep Stacks events right here in the States. First at Best Bet Jacksonville, then at the Turlock Poker Room in Central California, and finally back to Florida for WPT Deep Stacks Tampa, where Anthony Astorita took home more than $133,000 for his win. Then it was off to Nevada for the third installment of our incredibly popular WPT 500 series at RE Resort and Casino in Las Vegas, where Andreas Olympios earned $260,000 for outlasting nearly 4,000 entrants. Just incredible. It sure is, Vince, and it doesn't stop there. We added two more new names to the WPT Champions Cup. First at the Playground Poker Club in Quebec, Canada, where Seth Davies earned nearly $270,000 as a Canadian Spring Champion. Then in Holland, Angelko Andreevich earned 200,000 euros for his impressive win at WPT Amsterdam. Congratulations to all the winners. Join us on the World Poker Tour anytime. The complete tournament schedule can be found at WPT.com. Now let's get back to the action here in Oklahoma. Well, one of these four players will be adding their name to the WPT Champions Cup. Who will it be? Certainly anybody's game right now. Low stack just over five million, the big stack just over 10 million. Action going on, Craig. He's raised with an ace nine to 450. Behind him, Bastion with an ace five of diamonds. Bastion's played very conservative thus far at this final table, but he's gonna open it up here, looks like, with a three bet to 1.2 million. Benjamin Zamani with a nothing five deuce. I mean, why would you stall here? You know he's gonna muck this Trying hand. Trying to pretend like he had a decision. No yeah. A little acting there, Mike. All right, now here's the real problem back on Craig. You've raised it and now you've been three bet and all of a sudden ace nine just sort of shrinks up. Do you fold, do you call, do you raise? What do you do with this hand? Well, I can tell you right now if you're the chip leader and Whoa. Craig Varnell, you four bet it, that's what you do with it. And you watch this ace five shrink up now. Well, you just sometimes Woo. you think you're being robbed and you make a move like this with just the ace nine, and yes, it's gonna work. What a play by Craig Varnell right there against a guy that's played pretty conservative at this final table thus far. Well, his dad, Kevin, happy. Girlfriend, Denise, happy. All the Varnells happy right now. Family is pretty important. My mom and my dad, I talk to them on a regular basis. My dad, when I told him I was gonna start playing poker again, he was like, don't play poker for a living. And now that I've been successful, he's super proud and he texted me last night, it'll be finally good to see you play ball again. Because he used to come to like every football game and every baseball game. So for him, it's a really big deal, you know. I kind of give my dad all my trophies, so, you know, it'd be pretty awesome to win this and give him this too. That's it, boy. Well, Craig said the WPT 500 win at Aria, kickstarted his career, gave him the bankroll he was looking for, and now he's in good shape to take down a televised WPT event. He's gotta be so proud of his son, Craig, to watch him at one of these final tables, winning, it's just amazing, what a feeling. Let's go back down to the table, Bastion with a quick fold, Benjamin also going out. So the battle of the blinds here. James Mackey, very tough player, 30 years old, has 2.9 million in live tournament winnings. Well, he's raised it to 600,000. Craig gonna call behind him with queen eight. And here comes the flop. Well, it's eight, six, four. So James with a gut shot straight draw on the two over cards, gonna make a continuation bet here, like 700,000. I have to say, James gets involved with so many pots and yet he has nothing to never hit. It doesn't seem like he's just that talented. Here comes the raise. Craig with top pair. Happen to get a big piece of that. Well, Vince, he made a great four bet in the last pot with an ace nine offsuit. Okay. Here's a good raise. He's going to take down this pot. The guy is on a roll right now, no doubt about it. Nice end. A lot of talent here at Choctaw. Battling it out for a huge first place prize and all the goodies that come with it. Stay with us, we're coming back for more. You can play against us and other real players in Play WPT Game on Facebook. There are games running around the clock and you need to earn your chips at Play WPT. So think twice before going all in with that junk hand. Play WPT Poker, where skill matters. You know, Vince, Club WPT qualifier, William C. Al won his seat by playing on Club WPT. And hand after hand, we saw that William was a man of luck, skill and endurance. I was in the Navy for 24 years. 
that's why I wore my sweatshirt and I wear this hat because my head was shaved. I was experiencing numbness. Did the MRI. The doctor says you have two more. And I came out of brain surgery. I want to play in big tournament. This was just one of my bucket list. <laughs> I started playing Club WPT. I really wanted. Oh yeah. It was just a dream come true. It's worth it. Very worth it. William is a winner in so many ways, but you can sign up today at clubwpt.com and you can be a winner too with cash and prizes up for grabs each month. Plus, maybe we'll see you at the next live WPT event. Sign up at clubwpt.com and never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. Back to the table, four players, Craig Barnell, close to 13 million in chips. Can he close out the dream here tonight? on Benjamin Zamani, three-time WPT final tableist. He folds the hand. James Mackey now with queen nine. Yeah, gonna make a button raise here to 500,000. A call by Craig with the queen 10 of clubs. The new graphics, you see the C means call, the R means raise, the arrow means the action's on you, and that's how much it is, 300,000 more. And call by Bastion, three-way action again. Wow, look at this flop. Two players have flopped a straight, the other one with the middle pair and a straight draw. Well, the two guys with straights both check. They all check. Now the seven of clubs comes off. This gives Craig a flush. Checking the trap. Well, Bastion flopped the straight, he still got it. He's going to bet this time around in case somebody's got one club. You don't want to let him draw for free at you, but little does he know, he's drawing completely dead. Mackey goes away. And now Craig would like to punish him a little bit more. Yes, he does. Well, just in case his opponent's got a set or a ace or king of clubs in his hand wants to make him pay to hit a hand that could beat him, we know now that there is no hand that can beat Craig, and he's definitely going to win the pot just no matter how much. Now, how about that? Bastion flopped a straight, just throws it away right on the turn. Had anybody bet the flop, Bastion would be out of here in fourth place right now. You wanna see? No, no, no. I wanna see. You wanna see that? He's gonna turn the hand up and show these guys. All you're gonna do is make this guy feel very good. Bastion says, whoa, I'm on a free roll right now. If somebody would bet that flop, I'd have been busted. He'd have flopped a straight and been out, drawing dead. That's how it happens. Okay, we move on. James Mackey has raised with a king nine. Craig has gone out, and Bastion now with an ace ten. Now well, Bastion has made the call. Benjamin folds, so ace ten versus king nine. Bastion got to feel like a million bucks right now, Vince. He's on a free roll to win this title in his mind after that last hand. Here he's got top pair, top kicker, loving it. He checks. But James Mackey, no continuation bet this time. Now the five of clubs comes off. This gives Mackey a flush draw. Bastion out in front with the tens and is gonna bet him 600,000. No raise by James. Gonna call, hope to hit a club on the river. Let's see if he can do it. Yes, he does do it. Queen of clubs on the river. Wow, a backdoor flush for James Mackey. You just can't put your opponent on backdoor flush draws. It's just hard to do. Well, Bastion is gonna check. The clubs ruined him in the last hand. They've done it again here. James Mackey can't believe his luck from the Kansas City kid, age 30. Sticking out of bat, little over 1.4 million. Well, that's 60% of the pot. A pretty big bet there. Now, how do you get away from tens here? You don't put your opponent on a queen. So Bastion is going to make the call. He sees the back door flush. Nice. you got to be kidding me. How lucky is this guy? Oh, boy, that's a knife in the fingers there for the German. Just awful. He's looking again. Nice hands. No, it wasn't a nice hand. Don't say it. It's just awful. 
when that happens. James Mackey taking down a big one as four players remain here at Choctaw. Welcome back to WPT Choctaw in Oklahoma. Four players remain going after this major title here on the World Poker Tour. Craig Varnell well out in front with nearly 14.7 million in chips. Four left, all these guys trying to get their name engraved on the WPT Champions Cup. Lines are one and two, action on the German. Bastion, he goes out. Now Benjamin Zamani with an ace, 10 of clubs. Zamani, ironically, was born in Germany, but grew up in Boca Raton, Florida. Well, he has raised to a half a million. James Mackey going out. Craig gonna call with queen nine, and it's suited. Here's the flop. Queen, queen, deuce. How good is Craig Varnell running? Checking his trying to trap. Benjamin's not gonna bite, he checks behind him. Well, that's a nice check. Five of spades on the turn. Well, Craig is now gonna bet here. 650,000, but Zabani puts no more money in that pot. Amazing. Since he lost the minimum possible with that ace 10 of clubs there. Wow, good feeling by Zamani. Did he possibly feel that Craig had a queen in his hand? Perhaps he did. Good fold. Ben goes out here. But James is going to raise it on the button. Makes it 450 to go. And Craig behind him with an ace six. Well, he's going to three bet advance. He just feels like everything's going his way right now. Why not just keep it going? Try to punish him, but could have a problem here. Bastion goes out. James makes the call for another 750,000. Has his opponent dominated. Let's see what happens. A nice flop for Mackey. He's got middle pair with top kicker, but he also has the nut flush draw. He is just hoping Craig goes wild with betting here. Craig get none of that is gonna come out and make the continuation bet over a million. Well, Vince, virtually whatever he puts in the pot is gonna be going to James Mackey's stack here. Wises up and checks it. 